you are on uh, CNN News 18, part of the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll, part two of the News 18 Network's mega coverage of Bharat's biggest opinion poll. Over the course of the next few hours, Rahul Shiv Shankar, Shivani Gupta and of course Zaka Jacob who will get into the mix in a bit will get you big numbers from 12 other states. In part one of the opinion poll survey, the News 18 mega opinion poll, we brought you the complete picture of 242 seats across nine states of Bihar, Himachal Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Haryana, Delhi, Madhya Pradesh, Punjab and Uttar Pradesh. The big numbers across 242 seats that give the NDA a clear edge. So far, the NDA has almost a three-time lead over the India Alliance. But what will be the scenario across the remaining 301 seats over the next remaining 12 other states? In just a bit, we will bring you the opinion poll of two big states, that of Karnataka and Assam. But ahead of that, let's recap the overall Bharat numbers across 242 seats. Now, it clearly gives an edge. It clearly gives an edge. It clearly gives an edge to the NDA with 174 seats out of 242. 61 to the INDI Alliance. But what's the basis of this survey? How has this survey been conducted? We'd like to recap the survey methodology once again, ladies and gentlemen. 21 major states accounting for 95% of the Lok Sabha constituencies have been covered. 1,18,616 have been polled with a questionnaire. It's a computer-aided personal interview or CAPI in 11 languages. A total of 518 Lok Sabha constituencies have been covered. So 518 out of 543, nearly 95% overall of Bharat has been covered across these 21 states and union territories. 210 interviews have been conducted in each Lok Sabha constituency. Three Vidhan Sabha constituencies in each Lok Sabha seat have been covered. Five polling booths have been selected via random sampling. That's the extent of this, what we can very proudly say, most widespread, comprehensive and exhaustive opinion poll. The News 18 mega opinion poll. Day one, these are the states that were covered. Uttar Pradesh, where it was a clear sweep for the NDA, 77, 77 out of 80 seats to the NDA. Then, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Bihar. These were some of the standout states out of the nine states that were covered. What are the big takeaways? Historic 77 seats for the BJP in Uttar Pradesh. If you look at the numbers. And in Tamil Nadu, the NDA. The NDA gets and breaks open its account. Five seats there. 30 seats to the DMK Congress India Alliance. If you look at the states of Kerala, 14. 14 seats to the UDF, 4 to the LDF. So, the LDF pinching back 4 seats, but 2 seats to the NDA. Many were very surprised whether that will really happen. In Bihar, it's 39 out of 40, 38 out of 40. Last time it was 39 out of 40. This time it's 38 out of 40 for the NDA. INDI Alliance getting 2 seats. So, that's how the breakaway at this point is. What are the take takeaways? The survey suggests that the BJP is sweeping the heartland. The survey also gives us the takeaway that it's a historic win and never before for the NDA in Uttar Pradesh. The expansion of the entire saffron footprint is also visible in the south. Pollsters are predicting Tamil Nadu surge. BJP set to open its account in Kerala. All of these aspects stand out in these takeaways, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get to the numbers. We have our guests already with us. Let's get to the numbers now. The overall picture is right next to me. We can show 174 seats and 61. But let's try and get to the first numbers. Karnataka and Assam. We are going to talk about Karnataka and Assam. In the studios with me, Javed Ansari, Taseem Punawala, Nistula Hebar, 
Rahul Shivshankar and Shivani Gupta with us. Rahul Shivshankar, quickly, if you want to just go back to what happened yesterday. Day one of the mega opinion poll here at News 18. Yeah, thanks, uh, Anand. Uh, let me just quickly break it down. 174 out of 242 called yesterday with NDA needing 100 out of 301 more for a simple majority. To today, we'll just have to see that conversion rate. It has to win one out of three seats that we called today. If it needs to just get to where it was, past the halfway mark, not even to where it was, in fact. And can it get that sort of ratio, one out of three seats as we project them? That's the million dollar question. But the good news, at least for the NDAs, they'll take heart from this in Uttar Pradesh, plus 7%, vote share swing in its favor over 2019, Bihar 5%, in Haryana 4%, in Delhi 1.5%, in Punjab 3.5% swing in its favor, and in the two states that are actually creating ripples, and this survey is making a lot of news for, is the projection on Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Tamil Nadu, 10% vote share jump for the BJP, giving it, at least according to our survey, five seats there out of 39. Huge number. It will be seen as a massive breakthrough. In Kerala, two out of 20, a jump of about 5% in the vote share. That's one of the reasons why these numbers are looking inflated. But let me give you some very interesting statistics. The quality of the victory will be the key. So today when we really look at this, we have to analyze if the BJP is actually doing better than it did in 2019. And if it's a tight election, then this number will tell us. What are the numbers? BJP won 224 seats in 2019 with 50% vote share. So those 224, in 2019 were won with 50% plus vote share. 88 more, 88 more than 2014. We need to see if it can stay with those vote shares. If it doesn't, this could be an open contest, yours, let me tell you. And let me now take you back to the other side. Why is it that the BJP decided to quickly approach JDU, perhaps break the Shiv Sena, and also Laser focus on the SAD. There could be backroom talks going on, we don't know, but this is a very telling number. The non-BJP parties secured a vote share of 50% plus in 117 seats. So, BJP got those in 224, but the non-BJP parties got them in 117 seats. Now, these very interestingly include Shiv Sena, which was the United Shiv Sena, the JDU and the SAD. And you see where the BJP is hit heart. It wants those parties weakened so it can retain that number and perhaps exceed. Remember the number now Mr. Modi is set is not 303. It's 370 and for the NDA 400 plus. Mm. That's why this concerted effort over five years to break down the Shiv Sena, to break down, win back the JDU and to of course focus hard on the other side and try to break down the alliance game. Intriguingly, very interesting. This jump in vote share for the BJP, hmm. and I'm, I'm leaving it back to you, in right. those 224 seats did not yield many more than uh, obviously 2014. So while from 88, they went to a huge number uh, of uh, you know, uh, 224, and that means, as you can see, 88 more than 2014. It didn't get them many more seats. The vote share increased in seats where it's already quite strong. Correct. It needs to jump up in seats where it is not strong. See, to make that conversion one true. three. Overall, overall two three. what we are what we are looking at is and I think somewhere the Prime Minister has shifted the dynamic. He has said 370 and Charso par. Technically, in our minds, ladies and gentlemen, we need to remember it's 272 par. You are, you par, if the NDA crosses 272, they are back in government. And if they go 300, then they are comfortable. Now, 303 is the last time around. 325, 330 plus overall for the NDA. That's where the Prime Minister has shifted the goalpost. But basis on this opinion poll, Shivani Gupta is there on the wall with us. But, but the point is, had they not done what they've done to the Shiv Sena, not won back the JDU, 
it could have been a very tight very tight contest see even now it very is about retention yeah. it, you have to also gain you have to yes. make more to 300 3 to 370 so it needs to break out to get 67 more seats four seats yeah to 60. get more than you know 30 40% of the vote share 242 ka to report card nikal gaya 301 exactly. ka nikalne wala yes shivani no yes. you talked very rightly about how the bjp led by the prime minister have themselves extended their expectations to that 400 par <laughs> mark and that's going to be historic uh, and you talked about where do they gain. Now hmm. yesterday, as Rahul very rightly mentioned, what was the headline of our opinion poll, the Mega News 18 opinion poll? Two seats in Kerala, five seats in Tamil Nadu. Now a lot of people are debating this still, this evening. And today we're going to actually talk about the other big southern states as well. We've got Andhra, hmm. Telangana, Karnataka results coming up in just a bit. And these are states a lot has happened. Karnataka went back to Congress, Telangana has gone to Congress. You've got Andhra where the BJP and the TDP for the first time since 2018 are coming back together. True. So a lot to watch out for. Correct. But if you were to look at that belt, interestingly, let's keep Karnataka out. If you were to look Andhra, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Kerala. That's about 100 seats, ladies and gentlemen. And it's less than 10 seats for the BJP there. The NDA has not done well. Now, ADMK is also not part of that grouping. So it's not going to be easy. They mm. have to, and the part is, they have to get 67 more seats than the last time around BJP itself. Is it getting it or not? Let's, let's look at where it is standing right now. 242 seats. The race to 272 because that's the halfway mark. So for us, first that, uske baad jo target set kiya wo, if they meet it or not. So where is the BJP right now or the NDA right now at 174? They need to get another 98 seats out of 301 remaining today. 98 seats to get to this 272 halfway mark. That secures them as per the News 18 mega opinion poll. A third term, INDA alliance is at 61. Will they get up close to about 200? Will they become a stronger opposition than they were in 2019? 2024 will we see perhaps a little more opposition and heft for the opposition as far as the parliamentary constituencies and at the centre in parliament is concerned. We'll have to wait and watch. Let's try and get this, break this down before we get comments from our uh, guests here. We already have the numbers for the next most important state, the only bastion in the south where the BJP often has ruled the roost. Irrespective of who's in power at the state, they have returned big, big gains at the centre. The state of Karnataka, the first of the states, the 12 states we're going to cover in this part 2 of the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll. The state of Karnataka, 28 seats, 25 to the NDA, 3 to the Congress, 25-3. Is it the same score as the last time around? JDU this time around with the NDA. Now we are looking at 25-3. Let's look at the vote share in Karnataka. The BJP claimed that despite their loss in the Vidhan Sabha, they net-net posted a 2% vote share gain. NDA is getting 58% vote share. The Congress with 35% vote share. The other 7% vote share. The calculations, do they actually work? Karnataka, park it there. Let's bring in another state. Let's just jump across to Assam and let's see what's happening in that state. The big brother of the seven sisters in the northeast. This is NDA. 14 may say 12. Others take two, nothing for the INDI alliance, so nothing for the Congress party. The others, the two, if the AIUDF is going it alone, is it the AIUDF or another of the breakaway parties, but not part of the INDI alliance, it is 12 out of 14 seats for the NDA. That means the NDA already breaks into the 200 mark, 211 is the total number out of 284 seats now, so from 242, Add another 42 seats, 284. The NDA already is there in Assam with a vote share of 49% NDA, 39% to the INDA alliance. Others are 16%. Overall score goes up to 284 for the NDA. 284 for out of 543. That, that's the number of seats that we are calling out. 211 for the NDA. INDA alliance 64. That's the score as of now. Let's come back to Karnataka. Shivani, 
So does it mirror or is, why, is no, it one it's less? A, it's an interesting picture. 25 is what BJP won last time. Mm. This is the number from 2019. So they were NDA was at 26. But this NDA that we have formulated is actually with the BJP and the JDS now together. So one seat was JDS, 25 was BJP on its own. So they could argue they've kind of retained that. But Congress only had one last time. This time the Congress is gaining uh, two to come to three. And you also mentioned vote share around 35%. The Congress was about just shy of 32% last time around. So they ha are gaining, which is possibly not surprising, Anand, because they've just you know won a big mandate as far as the state elections are concerned. Mm. So this is how it was. And actually, if you include one other, which was Sumalata Amrish, the independent with the BJP, then it was 27 for them out of 28. But Sumalata Ambrish were actually helped by the BJP. That was the story on ground because yeah, so of she the is sympathy. With but the BJP. now Rahul Shiv Shankar, Nistula Hebba, Javed Ansari, and Tehsil Punapala. Can I? Yes. Can I? Can I? And then this? you can take yes. it to them. Yeah. yeah. First of all, um, with respect to the opinion poll, I went home yesterday. I analyzed Tamil Nadu, and I'm going to say this on TV. I will. It is impossible the BJP gets five seats in, in, in Tamil Nadu. It is impossible. Anand, I can guarantee you, I with a lot of respect, you guys cannot tell me the five seats they're getting. Hmm. I, I respect your poll. I respect it's a science. I have a lot of respect for this, for the pollsters. Hmm. I'm sure they spoke to all these people. But five seats for the BJP. And I, and I didn't react yesterday. Right. It is impossible. Impossible. Okay. I can understand there's a fight in Coimbatore. Okay. I can understand there's a fight can in Coimbatore. Can we take the story you, forward? With the Hindu, you we'll cover Tamil Nadu very, picture. very closely. Uh, sorry, just give me 30 uh, seconds. Sorry, uh, I'm sorry. Just, just allow uh, me, please. Yeah. Except for these two constituencies, can you tell me as of today, is the BJP seriously in a fight? I'm not saying that the Prime Minister has not gone there uh, the most after any political state. I'm not saying they're not making ways. I'm not saying the organization is charged. I mean, it simply isn't there. If this is true, if this is true, I should give up political consult, uh, political analysis. It isn't. It doesn't exist. Okay. Nobody is giving them now, those. Now, five. now no, hold do on. You, do that? you think five seats? Yeah. Five. five seats. I find it a little difficult to swallow because I still think that the BJP's project for Tamil Nadu, which operates as all such political projects do at the organizational level, at a consoli community consolidation, vote bank consolidation level, and at the narrative level, there's been a lot of push there. But it is still a project in the making. Okay. Let, let's come back to Karnataka. No, 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 no. Coimbatore and Kanyakumar. Let's, Those let's, are the only let's, let's come let's back. I'll tell you what. You can, no, Tessin, we can agree to disagree and let's park it there. We because one minute, one, one minute, one, one minute, sir. One minute, sir. History. History. Yeah. History. History is evident. How does this become a Look, I have also Come back to Karnataka. No. Come back to Karnataka. You are in power in the state and you still are gaining two seats out of out of the 28. So let's talk so about it. Let me tell yes. you, this is a very interesting point that both Shivani and you are raising. Yes, the Congress won. But. The research shows, and I've gone all the way back to the 80s, yeah, that's true. Karnataka has a unique voter behavior pattern. Mm. Yeah. So, in 84, 85, 84 was the general election, 85 was the assembly election. The Janta Party under Hegre did poorly in the Lok Sabha, but won the assembly. Mm. On the last four occasions, 2008, 2009, BJP formed a coalition government, if you remember. Didn't get the numbers. Yadurapa opened the gates for the BJP in 2008 okay. in that particular state. Massive celebration, a little short. Guess what happens? In 2009, so technically seats. no one won. But the BJP does very well. Yeah. It wins. Yeah. Two-thirds in the Lok Sabha. 2013, 2014, Congress wins. Siddha wins, but the BJP wins the Lok Sabha. Correct. Okay? That's the Modi wave, the beginning of it. Yes. Mm. 2018, 2019, JDS and Congress win that election. Of course, in 2019, BJP gets 25 out of 28, hmm. historic mandate for it. This time, history favors the BJP. Yeah. It has lost the assembly, could end up winning the Lok Sabha. And so JDS history, is with it. history yeah. said. Now, the problem for the BJP is South. And let me just focus on this. It's very interesting. The reasons, even at the height of its wave, when Yadurapa swept through in 2008 assembly, guess what happened? The BJP won only 11 out of the 61 states in these 10 districts in the South Karnataka. Hmm. And in 2019, where did those three seats go? To the other side in South Karnataka. South Karnataka. That's why JDS is in the mix. The Vokaliga factor, 
Old Correct, Mysuru but, region. But, what, but if you here's look at these numbers, no, no, here's what if you look opinion, at these yeah. numbers, the South actually they've done better here. No, if actually look, in the they, South, they've last retained. time around, uh, the one seat that the BJP did not get was the one that Ravana won uh, they lost for three the seats JDS. There in the South. But this time around, this is a plus one actually yeah. for the Congress. Hmm. So right. Congress no, no. is gaining the in Congress the South one be. seat, and they're also gaining in the North. The yes. BJP had swept the North. They're sweeping coastal Karnataka still, three out of three. And of course, uh, this is one in Bangalore. This was the DK Suresh seat. Yeah. He's going to be, uh, you know, their incumbent candidate. So this is 4-1 last time around, 3-0 last time around. This was 11 and this was 8 for them. But, but this, this was with the BJP is only contesting 20 seats, at least as yeah. of now. Declared as 20. Of now. No, so they're only declared 25. Okay. And they've only declared 20 till now. They've only declared 20 till now. They've only declared 20 till now. There's still 8 to go, out of which we have heard two to three seats to Mr. Gowda and family. Yeah. Uh, that's where it's going to go. Mr. Gowda's family. And his family, yes. <laughs> and about and the rest of it, BJP will be fighting uh, on its own. Hmm. And, uh, so it can't do better than it did last time? No, it can't, but it if has it to repeat. 25 seats, but it has it will to need 100% strike rate overall, to win 25. Overall, but it still needs to get to not, three. No, but the yeah, point, see, the see there are two things is, they need to worry about. One is that they let go of the Lingayat vote just before completely. the assembly election. Yes. So they have a problem of reconsolidating it. They did some... Uh, which uh, are coming no, no, no. They did some, yeah, they did some repair Shekar, work. B. They Vijendra, got Vijayendra. Uh -huh. yeah. They got uh, Yadurapa's son, uh, B. Y. Vijayendra, as party president. If you look at the list of 20, hmm. uh, they've got B. S. Bombay and former chief yeah. minister Lingayat Agen face, etc., etc. Et They're trying to put their best foot forward there. They've removed some people. They've got the Mysore Maharaja. So in South uh, uh, <coughs> Karnataka, as Rahul said, of course, that is actually their Achilles heel. The Bokkalega vote doesn't go to the BJP. Correct. Which is why they said that, okay, this time round we will have an alliance with Mr. Gowda. Mr. Gowda has his back to the wall. It's a question of survival for his political party. After his dismal showing in the Karnataka Assembly election, we were all together Correct. here when we saw it. So, he agreed. To add and to what she's saying, there's a very good data point, sir, which you might be interested in knowing. Whenever the BJP allies, it gains from the alliance, not yes. necessarily the other way. Because other they will way. help in yes, other Javi seats Ji. in Sorry. South Javi, we got three guests with us. Uh, Sanjay Kumar of CSDC uh, 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 is with us. Uh, CSDS. Our so, Sardar RP Singh is also with us. And Shujat Ali, leader Congress. And Sumant Raman is also with us. But yes, Javed Ji. So, word coming out of Karnataka is that the, the, the BJP stands to gain big time from the alliance and less so Mr. Gowda. Mm. Uh. Mr. Gowda, if you speak to him, he says, you know, I was not for it, but what to do? He blames the Congress for pushing him into the lap of the BJP. But be that as it may, it's BJP is to gain. If and BJP has a has a tough task ahead, even repeating 2019, Correct. it won't be that easy for them. And this Correct. time, if there is a Congress unit which is active and organized yeah. in this country, it's Karnataka. Yeah, but, uh, no, but there is a big, one, 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 there is one, a big one. factor in Tamil Nadu, which is uh, sorry, in uh, Karnataka, which is the popularity of the Prime Minister. Yes, mm. he has a tremendous amount of popularity there, and that is a factor which is the overriding factor on a lot of issues. Vote share. Mm. There's a lot of gap Huge. to cover. But there, there, there's but, a lot of gap. No, no, but there is a, a double-ticket election but is how you, you have to see it. But I'll tell you what, the Congress is a very good unit in Karnataka. With Siddharama and, and uh, DK, they have a very good fighting chance. These are not uh, politicians who don't understand Karnataka. The vocal Liga votes is firmly with DK. And I'm telling you this today, the Lingayat history vote, the Lingayat vote, the Lingayat vote is them. also going Tessie, a little bit towards the Congress. I tell you what. This one time, point this I have time, to tell you, the I largest number of card savers for in 1992 yes. came from the Dakshina Kannada of district of Karnataka, Ram Mandir. And uh, the consecration of an idol that was created yes. in Mysuru by a Kanadiga sculptor. Hmm. All, All of these of things are huge. Yeah. I am not, not saying sure. BJP is not strong. Uh, no, I am Tessin saying can be a, a very strong place. advocate, but the point is nobody thought that the BJP will win 18 seats in Bengal. It did. There have been many, many, that many, many I surprises in the different. past when it comes that to is central elections. When it comes to central elections, Mr. Siddharamaya was in power when the BJP returned the BJP 25 seats the last time around to Sir. Lok Sabha is different. Yeah, Modi is on the ticket. Who's on the ticket with respect to the Congress Are party? There, you are not even holding the same vote share the that you did Kong, in the, the Vidhan Sabha election. Is not crossing the in Tamil Nadu. In okay, let's not go across to our guest, Sanjay Kumarji. Sanjay Kumarji is with us. Sanjay Kumarji, your thoughts, sir? 
on the News 18 Mega Opinion poll, 284 seats out uh, and 25-3 uh, is the score as far as Karnataka is concerned. Sanjay ji. Uh, more or less on the expected line, there may be dis disagreement about one state or two state. Say, I know that there is a disagreement about, about Tamil Nadu, whether BJP will be able to you know, win five seats or not, whether BJP will be able to win two seats in Kerala or not. But more or less, if I look at the big picture, the big picture is more or less on the same lines that BJP is holding on very strong, NDA is very strong, and in 2024 Lok Sabha elections, the India alliance seems to be weakened. Uh, about Karnataka, there's a lot of debate about Karnataka. Yes, we have seen in the past that uh, Congress can manage to win elections in the state assembly, but when it comes to the Lok Sabha election, it's a very different kind of voting, especially in Karnataka, and we have seen that happening in many other states as well. Hmm. Uh, you have been mentioning uh, Narsimhan that uh, you know the Modi is on the big, uh, is on the you know like the ticket vote is for the Modi, yeah. and Prime Minister Modi is a vote puller for the BJP in twenty in, in the Lok Sabha election. That's likely to happen even in twenty twenty four Lok Sabha election. So as I said. To conclude, I'm not surprised. I may be surprised a little bit by the extent of victory which the opinion poll is suggesting. I'm also a little skeptical about Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Kerala and Tamil Nadu, a lot of discussion points and conversation points around Kerala and Tamil Nadu because of the seat share projections. We have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the methodology is that each Lok Sabha constituency, three Vidhan Sabha uh, areas have been, uh, have been, each Lok Sabha seat, three Vidhan Sabha constituencies have been covered. 218 interviews in every constituency, every Lok Sabha seat has been done. So, that's, this is feedback that's from... That's fine. No, no, I'm just that's saying this fine. is feedback from the ground. Please, please. No, uh, people no, can no, no, challenge, no. accept, dis disagree. That's that's true. I'm just no, putting no, no. out the methodology. I'm, I'm glad, Jay, I'm Sanjay. glad that Anand. this is a poll which is showing the methodological details. Absolutely fine. Very good. But, you know, they, that doesn't guarantee. No, no, no that's, that's true. true. Ab so the can poll I, is can I just... Absolutely. 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 The other yeah. thing is, other the other thing is, ladies and gentlemen, we have to also tell you very, very clearly that these are all projections. The number that we need to keep in mind at this point is the BJP saying 370. Right now, if it is not gaining three more seats in Karnataka, it is not moving towards the 370 number. Precisely. We That's have to understand point. that so far it's holding ground. Yesterday or day one of the uh, News 18 Mega Opinion poll, Rahul Shivshankar had surmised that there is about a 12 to 15 seat gain yes. for the NDA but overall, today, not necessarily for the BJP. It hasn't yeah. started with a gain. It might end yeah. up with a few losses. We don't know. Our opinion polls suggest that it is holding steady. But, uh, you know, fundamentally, there is a sense of anxiety. You would not be getting rid of 10 sitting MPs hmm. and bringing in another 10 if there was no. And the focus is again in that Mysuru South region. Okay. That's the Achilles heel. So, Dr. Raman, do you believe the BJP has done enough? to secure itself in this South Karnataka area where it has traditionally been weak in two assembly elections that it lost, it only got about 11 out of 61 seats in these 10 districts. Now, one particular uh, uh, issue that I want to point out, Rahul, is that the JDS is not the JDS it was maybe 10 years ago. So, and we saw that in the assembly election. One very important factor, the Muslim vote in Karnataka, particularly in the old Mysore region, used to be divided between the JDS and the Congress. Now, with this alliance going to the BJP, that Muslim vote is going to go away from JDS and is going to go into the uh, hands of the Congress. So, the, it doesn't really mean that the JDS got 13% last time. You can straight away add that 13% to the BJP is 36% and then you will get 49%. It doesn't work that way. Second, 36% was the BJP's vote share in the assembly election held about a year or even less than a year ago. It is right. extremely unlikely that that number would go to 58. I understand Mr. Modi is on the ticket. That would push a very significant proportion of voters towards the BJP. RP Singh, and, how do you, you know, respond to Dr. How do you respond to Dr. Raman? How do you respond to Dr. 58 is a 22 percent swing in Fair favor enough. of the BJP. Which I don't think is, is feasible. Okay, mm. it's not feasible. Fair enough. Uh, yes, go ahead. Well, RPC. Dr. Raman himself, Dr. Raman. Dr. Raman himself answered the question. He said it's the big ticket for Prime Minister Modi. This election is not the state election, one. Secondly, over the last few months, there's a very strong anti government the state the government also. What is happening in Bangalore today is not confined to Bangalore. The message goes to other 
uh, part of the state also, the water crisis and the way the promises were made and they have partially tried to fulfill them at the cost of the development in the state and this message has percolated down. Our party has also ensured that message goes down and it's, we are accepting, we have taken the political advantage also of uh, they are not fulfilling the promises as they made. I mean, they, it has been only partially uh, done right. and, and half half heartedly done. Right. So, so far, we, sir. We so far, sir. If you want to do also, better than 2019 as a party and as an alliance, are you on course for that, or are you on course just to be able to get to where you were in 2019? We leave the viewers to figure those numbers out as we take a break, ladies Congress and gentlemen. 211, 64, nine out of 284. Seats that have been so far called out out of 543 here on the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll. Shujat Ali of the Congress with us. Our guests have a lot to say, but we've got a lot of ground to cover. It's a pan network coverage. And that's why we've got to stick to time and our ad breaks. When we come back, it's three more states that we'll add. Rajasthan, Uttarakhand and Telangana. Stay with us. Samajwadi Party had five seats uh, at 13% uh, vote share. Now, I want to look at the Samajwadi Party seats. If you go back and just click on the UPA seats, uh, look at the Samajwadi Party seats. These are, you know, family bastions for the Samajwadi Party. Uh, and, you know, Shantanu was talking about it. Seats like Sambal, Rampur. These are, Rampur, for example, Azam Khan. I don't think Azam Khan has and his family have lost that seat in at least the last four or five elections. So, Sambhal, uh, Rampur, Muradabad, these are three in the Western UP belt. There is, of course, Maipuri uh, right in the heart, uh, which Mulayam Singh Yadav last time around won, and then subsequently it was retained by the Samajwadi Party. And then in the Purvanchal side, they had one seat, which is uh, uh, the Azamgarh seat. Akhilesh Yadav had won it last time around, and then, of course, uh, they lost that uh, subsequently in a by election. So, these are the five seats that the Samajwadi Party had. If you want to go back and check uh, the BSP, because the BSP. Remember, BSP and SP were in alliance in 2019. The BSP had 10 seats. Again, a cluster of seats here in Western UP from Saranpur. Uh, then they had Bijnor. They had Amroha, Nagina. These are four or five seats that they had in Western UP, which is the Jat plus Muslim combination. So clearly, the BSP benefited from the Samajwadi Party tie-up simply because some of the Muslim and Yadav votes there in Western UP did transfer to BSP candidates. Also, they had a cluster of votes in Purvanchal as well as in the Awadh belt. So, for example, Jaunpur was won by the BJP, Ambedkar Nagar was won by the BJP, uh, sorry, the BSP, uh, Lalganj was won by the BSP candidate, Ghazipur, was a, which was a big upset. Panod Sina was a sitting candidate at that time. He was expected to win in this BJP wave. He lost to uh, Ajit, uh, to, to the BSP <coughs> candidate, uh, Afzal, Afzal uh, Ansari won that uh, seat from Gosi again, and then Shravasti was the other seat. So, it's clear that the BSP, which had 10, is coming down to one seat. Now, we don't know which of these 10 that they're losing, sorry, which of these 10 that, uh, that they're winning that one seat. Uh, but more importantly, I think the 19, it is 77 seats this time around in Uttar Pradesh. Out of the 80 seats, UP jo jit gaya, sarkar uski. This has been always a thought process. But in this case, these 77 seats could propel the BJP and the NDA closer to 370 and 400 respectively. 400 par ke liye 70 par UP mein avashyak tha, yaha 75 par ho gaya hai. 77, ladies and gentlemen, 77 to the NDA, 2 to the INDI alliance, 1 to the BSP and a near 60% vote share, 57% to the NDA. INDI alliance 26%, BSP 9%. Before we break it down for you, where are these 15 seat gains with, uh, with Zaka on the magic wall? Rahul Shiv Shankar, yes. So let me just sum this up, uh, all the numbers that we've called. In the north, in the seven states, the BJP has 167 out of 183 that we've projected, which is a strike rate of 91%. So you've already gone up by roughly a percent and a half over 2019. Four states are yet to be called. That we'll tell you about tomorrow. Mm. Overall, out of 242 seats that we have called, the BJP is up by 11 mm. over its 2019 tally. 
It now needs 56 out of 301 seats that we will project to get to 370. That is what Mr. Modi has set for the BJP. In other words, it needs roughly to pick up one out of 4.8 seats as we go ahead into day two tomorrow of this opinion poll. So mm. 370, at least as of now, looks very probable. No, mm. but just a caveat. Tomorrow's yeah. states are the states where the BJP is not in the exactly. front runner position. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. Bengal, Odisha, I'm just saying Telangana. mathematical probability hmm. yeah. is that it just needs to pick up one. Back on, ladies and gentlemen, on the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll, and we're going to call out the next three states. 284 out of 543 seats called already. 211 to the NDA. NDA on course, 61 seats it needs to get to 272, the halfway mark. Let's look at Rajasthan. 25 seats in the state of Rajasthan, all 25 going to the NDA, the BJP. BJP walking away with all 25 seats in Rajasthan. That's what the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll tells you. 218 interviews from every Lok Sabha seat in Rajasthan. That's what's been used to make the projection, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the standard template across all the Lok Sabha seats surveyed. 518 in all. 61% vote share for the BJP in Rajasthan. Perhaps the first state where the BJP is so comfortably, individually on its own, crossing the 60% vote share mark at the Lok Sabha elections in the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll. So this is 61, 33, 6, that's the vote share, but all 25 go to the BJP. That means, again, far more closer to that 272 number, the NDA now. Let's look at Uttarakhand, all five go to the BJP. All five go to the BJP in Uttarakhand again. Zero to the Congress party. These are all straight fights between the BJP and the Congress. So there is no alliance called here. That's why the party is being called out. Again, 62% vote share. Another state after Rajasthan where the BJP is commanding a whopping 60 plus percent vote share, 62% vote share for the, uh, for the BJP. That means 241 already. That count is going up to 241. One more state, Telangana. This is going to get everybody a buzz. Yeah. And we're going to have the debates going through. BJP, eight seats. Eight seats. Eight seats out of 17 for the BJP. So again, gain. Is it gain? Eight seats for the BJP. Six for the INDI Alliance. Two for the BRS. Eight, six, two, and one. That one could be the AIMIM. Yes. And the old Hyderabad seat, is that the one? There will be Madhavi Lata who would want to disagree, but the Oasis have held forth there since the 1980s, since Salahuddin Oasis up. So, 27% vote share for the BRS, 28% vote share for the BJP. INDI Alliance, 34% vote share. The others pulling away 11% vote share. So the moment it's a three-party fight, three-party race, the votes are getting split. Splitting error. Are you telling <laughs> me that BJP is getting more than the Congress in Telangana? The BJP is getting more than the Congress you know, in Telangana in the Lok Sabha election. No, in the so election. interestingly, yes. not in Shivani. the vote share. The vote share is still very much 34% for Anand, Congress. At this rate, but the I want BJP to... should get 500 seats. Okay, I want to very quickly, you, I want to very quickly point out the scenario as far as last time is concerned. Why is everybody abuzz with this result? TRS to this time, the BRS to this time, that means a loss of seven seats for the BRS. They had nine last time, single largest party with 42% vote share almost. The BJP had won four last time. It's not like they didn't open their account. They had four last time, they're adding four. They're also adding about 10% in their vote share, according to our opinion poll. The INDA, predominantly the Congress as far as Telangana is concerned, very small marginal partners mm. for them. They had three last time, they're adding three. They're also adding 4% in their vote share. This, I think, is going to be the AIMIM, the others. But here, the interesting story is... That's where is the 15% has been split. The BRS, 15% minus in their vote share. 
क्रिएशन ऑफ दैट स्टेट I spoke to some BRS people. They were completely on board with the fact that they are not going to get more than two mm. seats mm. Mm. as uh, as of now. But they felt that uh, actually Congress will do better than the BJP. Yeah. Uh, BJP will get around six seats, and the rest will be with the Congress. And uh, they pointed out some problems with whatever. So, and mm. if you look at the BJP's uh, candidate list also, mm. and the kind of joinings that have been happening since then. Lot of BRS people have joined. At least three, B, for, uh, you know, BJP, uh, BRS mm. MPs, two MLAs, etc. They've all been given tickets. They've joined the BJP. So there is a like a ground problem for the BJP uh, in that area. Sikandrabad is the only organically BJP seat that Correct. they've been winning through yes. the last few yeah. years. Yeah. So the, all the other places they have to depend on other. Uh, from for, <laughs> for mm. people from turn coats and things like that, mm. and this BRS person was extremely cynical. I thought politically said, "Abi, uh, you know the things will run in the same way in Telangana. What happens is whoever wins the assembly, that person will win big in the mm. Lok, Lok Sabha and the panchayats, and then just close to the election, whatever political change has to happen." Then that movement will start. So well, there is a political so, so momentum in the state, yeah. which well, he said I, has, is not I, going I to be. I kind of slightly disagree. Mm. I believe that not with you, of course. Mm. Uh, this is a state which is crucial, actually, for the Congress mm. and the BJP both. <laughs> mm. For the BJP to prove that when it's up against the Congress, which in Telangana it is now after what happened in the Assembly. to prove that it is succeeding in congress mukt bharat it has to do better against the congress if it doesn't well they they on its face so yeah. there is a little bit of prestige here but for the congress this will be a little worrisome because they were hoping to once again do better against regional parties script a comeback if they have to do well in the neighboring state of andhra telangana would have been because bjp I put in my notes needs to breach the 25% to be a serious contender, and our poll is showing 28%. 28%. So, so I think we are prescient here. Hmm. The thing is, for BJP, Telangana is the second state after Karnataka, mm -hmm. okay, where it actually has a chance of doing better. Okay, now so in this, this case, if Mr. Amit Shah is watching this, he's going to be upset with us because only the other day he said 12 out of 17 seats. 12, 12 seats is what the BJP is hoping for. In in Telangana, many would say unprecedented. There, there can be different opinions. I'm just putting out what the BJP believes at this point. They may be totally off the ball. No, but they play they're, always the maximalist no, no, position. No, no, so. not just the maximalist yeah. position. Right. They, this was the reaction of the BJP MLAs the day after the Telangana result. Their yeah. thing was that they will win minimum ten seats. That was the confidence they had, despite the Congress taking the Vidhan Sabha. They said Lok Sabha, we will win minimum ten. That's Anand, what their thought process was. Now Javed ji, yes Javed. That's why Amit Shah is saying twelve. Ji, my hmm. experience tells me never go by what the leaders say. Hmm. Amit Shah said he'll win two hundred seats in Bengal, in Bengal, yeah. in Karnataka. You have to talk up. He said one fifteen Gujarat. You have to talk up your position because you need to. Yeah. You know, pump up your own card. No, but yeah. as far as Telangana no, is concerned, yeah. yeah. let him come. Let him come. Let him come. Yeah. Yeah. And for the the BRS is fighting for its survival. for the congress it's very important to 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 win and win win big there mm. because otherwise the congress will not even go past 54 that yeah. it had last time absolutely and for the bjp it's also very important that they do well in three, in karnataka they will form right. the government even if they don't do well in south india but they need to do well in south india to be able to get anywhere near 370 right okay tehsin yeah I am again going to go to Shujaat ji. Yeah. I'm going to stick my neck out and say in Karnataka the Congress is anywhere about ten. 
in Telangana, the Congress is 12. Come what may, okay. it is, uh, this, this analysis seems to be that, okay, you've got, uh, suddenly Amit Shah ji said this, uh, Modi ji said this, Modi ji... Well, would you concede somebody, then if the Congress doesn't do well in Telangana, according to your numbers, it is actually in trouble? If, the, if, if this is no, the numbers in Telangana, it, Congress is not crossing 50. Even Javid if it does, right. even if it does well right. in Telangana, it is in trouble because the Congress will not get anywhere near 100. Okay. Where is now, it losing? Now, now, now here is a, no, no. Where is it losing so much no, 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 if they don't yes, win If they so don't well get those Telangana. numbers in Telangana, if these are the numbers, Congress is not crossing 50. After the manner in which Rahul Gandhi has sort of played up the North versus South, the wisdom of the voters, etc., his prestige is on the line more than right. anyone else. Okay, let's just go across. Shujat, Shujat Ali ji, Telangana Others and Karnataka, no, the opinion poll does it. not see so big gains for the INDI alliance, especially the Congress party. How would you see this, sir? Despite that big win in Telangana, Revant Reddy and team will not get more than six seats in the Lok Sabha. According to our internal survey, which has come just now, hmm. we are going to get minimum 20 seats in Karnataka <laughs> and 14 seats in uh, Telangana. Hmm. Fantastic, sir. And our position is very strong in both these states. Hmm. 20 in Karnataka and 14 in Telangana. Sir, when was the last time the Congress won 20 seats in Karnataka, sir? <laughs> well, last time you don't ask where. No, we are no, sir, I'm about saying the when was position. the last time, despite being in power, that the Congress won 20 seats in Karnataka and Lok Sabha, sir? See, BJP came in 1980. Before that, only Congress was ruling the entire country. Correct, sir. So, you are going back 40, 44 years. So, our, our, our position is very strong in uh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Telangana. Sir. As far as Telangana is concerned, I would like to tell you again, we are going to get 14 seats in Telangana. 14 seats in Telangana. Okay. Uh, uh, Sardar R.P. Singh? Yes. Yeah, you are saying 14 seats in Telangana. We will, we will check with Sardar R.P. Singh. Your thoughts, sir. Eight seats, what zyada de diya opinion poll mein aapko. Ask him. Kaise jeet sakte hain aap eight seats? How can you win eight seats, sir? Ji, ji, thank you Manage. so much. Ji, thank you. Anand, in the assembly po, uh, election also, our vote percentage doubled from 7 to almost 13.95 or 14 percent. And this time again, it's going to double because there's a rider again. The Prime Minister is the election for the Prime Minister of the country. It's an election for the country. It's not the state election. And the Telangana CM has already stated that he wants to follow the Gujarat model. And if he wants to follow the Gujarat model, then yes, people would like to vote for a person who can help the state also with the Gujarat model. And that's the Prime Minister Modi. Well, let me bring in uh, the gentleman from the spokesperson of uh, the, uh, the BRS. Uh, so this is uh, not looking very good for regional parties. You had succeeded. Uh, you had succeeded in stalling the advance of the Congress and the BJP. Andhra Pradesh, United Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, both were pushing up regional parties. Now that's not happening. No, there, there's nobody, uh, okay. BRS panelists just dropped out. But oh, Sanjay oh. Kumar ji, would you look at this number if I can ask Sanjay Kumar, Shujat Ali, Sumant Si Raman, and uh, we have Sardar R P Singh with us. So Sanjay ji. Do you believe that the BJP will have gains in Telangana? Because if they want to move closer to 350 as a party from 303, Telangana is one of the states they have to make big gains in. Uh, uh, Anand, you are right that Prime Minister Modi has, uh, you know, like set a target that BJP would be winning 370 and India would be winning 400 plus. Hmm. Uh, if BJP has to come anywhere close to that, they need to make gains in the southern state. We are discussing Telangana. I am not surprised that Telangana in the Lok Sabha election, it is heading for a bipolar contest between BJP on one side and the Congress on the other side. Gee. So I'm not surprised about that because voters of the state realize that this is not a state assembly election and the two claimant for the for forming the government at the center would be BJP or the Congress along with their allies. Hmm. Even though they realize that Congress may be, you know, poor second, but still the possibility of challenging BJP at the center would be the Congress. So I'm not surprised that the polls suggest that, you know, eight seats to BJP and six to Congress. I would not stick my neck out to say 
oh, Congress mm. may get eight and BJP may get six. But I think more or less this is the direction in which I see Telangana moving in 2024 Lok Sabha elections. Mm. 250 nearly, 249 out of 284 so far. No, 331, no, no. beg your pardon. 249 out of 331 so far, right there above me, the score is there. 70 for the INDI Alliance, 12 others, 331 may say, 249. 249. We have gone to 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, one, 14 one states. 14 states. 14 in, states we have declared. 14 yeah, states declared. Yeah. In two states now, Karnataka and Tanangana, the Congress actually affecting the fortunes of the regional parties. Interesting. How will that be viewed? by other prospective partners, so-called secular parties, that's interesting. In Karnataka, winning on the back of JDS and here at the expense of the BRS. Isn't JDS getting ruined because the, gone with the BJP House? No, Congress it happened, it happened, it happened, it happened, it happened in the well. assembly elections. They were not partners uh, in the assembly. So, I know they were, they, but, but I'm saying is, that they were gaining at the not expense a of a regional player. But this is not and a, that's the reason but, why but today BJP, the JDS no, no, is yeah, with the BJP. But no, BJP gained at the expense of an alliance partner. Let Javiji speak. Is that in the BJP? Can we go to the secular vote for now? The BJP the, the, doesn't claim Congress to have a secular, you know, Congress so secular okay, okay, okay. Well, The yeah. Congress and the, claim and the JDS have, have been contesting each other since kingdom come. Mm. Yeah. This is not something which has happened today. Mm. How does that affect the, all the other regional that, parties? And you had a uh, point to make to Suman Si Raman about the Muslim yeah, vote. Mr. Also. Suman, Suman was Raman talking about that yeah. consolidation yes. of the Muslim vote. Look, every time, one Muslim vote alone cannot make or mar, mar yeah. for a party's fortunes. And it, it can only make a difference if it is in conjunction with, with, with other, with, when other castes, other communities join in. And by, by itself, and if there is a Muslim consolidation, then the reverse will happen. There will be a majority community consolidation also. So therefore, you know, we, we overhype or, or we, we, hmm. we talk, you, you, we give it far more importance than actually it happened. Yeah. Fair point Kanaka, made. The I other aspect is even the Muslim vote. Even, okay, even the Muslim vote. Even the Muslim vote can be split based on segments or sections or sectarian or caste groupings within the Muslim society itself. Be it the Sunni votes, the Shia votes, Pasmanda. the the, the Pasmanda, Pasmanda Sufi Bura, votes. All of Bura that can votes, also Koja break votes. down. And there but is Alan, a difference even point. in gender. The men and the women among the Muslims. And yeah. just one quick point about uh, Karnataka. I come back to Karnataka again. This is bothering me a lot. It sums, how does the how does the BJP claim to get or the survey says the BJP is getting both the Lingat and Vokaliga votes if it's getting this many seats and there's a polarization in the Muslim vote. During Lok Sabha polls, yes. they do get. That's true, but the Lingat. That's Lingayas why they want the Muslims. Tessie, if you are asking a question, you are also listen. If you got, if you are asking a question, at least hear her answer. Allow me to finish. I tell you the combination the Congress is. The Congress in the south of Karnataka has a good thing going with the Vokalligas, with the minorities, with the Kurba, with the SC. The community, the Kurba for men. You are looking at this as if it's an assembly election. This is a national election where we give them the ticket. Okay, now, no, 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 no. Three or four is fifteen percent. Fifteen percent. Excuse me. That's not swing. That's it. That's it. That's it. Fifteen percent. The Congress will get more than ten seats. What was the Congress's? What was the BJP's? In Karnataka, what hmm. was the BJP's vote share? Can we pull that number up in twenty? Let's go back to Karnataka. Karnataka. Let's go back. Yeah, state election. Can we bring in Karnataka state election and look state at the BJP? State election I don't have quite here, uh, oh. but okay. you wanted to know. But states, for the I think, yeah. 2019 Lok Sabha we have. We've not 2014 got. 2014 yeah. Lok Sabha we have. We have. Yeah, I was uh, looking at the uh, 2023 state election hmm. in Karnataka. So Karnataka, I remember this. They had retained their vote share about 36 percent. 36 percent. They lost and seats, what is it in but Lok they Sabha? retained their vote share. 20 percent more. In Lok Sabha, That's it's almost 20%. No, no, it's, it's not, not an outlier. Interestingly, so in Karnataka, in that's, this was the that's case. another fact. I remember this. There was a 2% bump up for the BJP. The BJP increased its vote share in Karnataka by 2% despite the Congress victory and a big win yeah. there. So, despite losing the assembly elections, they had a 2% bump up in the Vidhan Sabha elections. And there has always been a 15 to 18% exactly. bump up for the BJP in Karnataka when it comes to Lok Sabha. So, the Prime Minister on the ticket is not 3 to 4%, Tazin Punawala. It's upwards of 15%. Sardar R.P. Singh, Blood. will you take the eight seats in Telangana? Because that's four less than what the what the Chanakya of the I BJP has set as target. Or sir, of eight, me to aapka 370. Chanakya is never wrong. Let's 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 understand this, especially with the parliamentary election, he can never go wrong. And also, again, I reiterate. We have increased our vote bank every time. I mean, we were 
7 percent to 14 percent and now we are again going to increase this time again. And as, as I said, this is a parliamentary election. This is election for Prime Minister Modi. Hmm. This is not election for the local state uh, 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 steep minister. Hmm. And, and then again, people are not going to waste their vote by voting for BRS. I am sorry to say that. Hmm. They are going to vote for us. The BRS vote is in big number chunk trans is getting transferred to us. Hmm. Uh, yeah. With your permission, I just wanted to go across to Suman. Suman, uh, you wanted to come in very quickly, then I have a question for you as well. Yeah, two, two quick points, mm -hmm. um, uh, Giovanni. One of them is related to Telangana. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the Congress has set a target of 10 seats in Telangana for the party as a kind of a bare minimum. Mm -hmm. And in Karnataka also, Karnataka, they're actually reasonably confident of at least picking up 7 to 8 seats, closer to 10. So this 25-3, I don't see is it as a feasible option, uh, especially uh, I, I do agree that the BJP will win the majority of seats in Karnataka, but it is not going to be a sweep. So you're you must saying the assembly bump is going to translate into a Lok Sabha bump for the Congress no, the as well? No, assembly last time, last time, the Siddharamaya no, government no, no. had that, 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 almost that balloon has already busted. There was huge anti-incumbency. One minute, uh, one minute, uh, 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 Mr. Singh, one minute. Last time, in 2019, hmm. there was anti-incumbency against the Congress government very significantly because they had almost completed their term. Whereas this time, they're just one year old. So it's extremely unlikely that the same... I, I do concede the BJP will win the majority of seats in okay. Karnataka. But, you know, the but question, I don't believe the question that it's I going to be a 25-3. The and question, Telangana, there is no way they are winning eight seats. Okay. There's no real okay, we'll have logical to wait. way. If you can name the seats, yeah, I can but take Suman, it. Yeah, but I had a question for you. I mean, you know, now we've done about four major southern states. We showed Kerala, Tamil Nadu yesterday. We are showing you the vote share jump for the BJP in states like Telangana. And of course, in Karnataka, they've always been pretty strong in the Lok Sabha. Suman, don't you think this narrative of the BJP not doing well in the south is not going to stick around? Even in the run-up to these elections, that narrative is already breaking down? As I said, the BJP will increase its vote share in mm. the southern states, primarily because Mr. Modi is on the ticket. It's mm. not an assembly election, it's a Lok Sabha election. So, I I'll tell you uh, an example, a BJP NDA mm. alliance in 2014 polled mm. almost 20% in Tamil Nadu. Yes. Mm. Right. And then the BJP went back to being a 3% party in the assembly elections after that. So the point really is that this, I would say that it's not the BJP right. NDA, it's a Mr. Modi hmm. factor. Hmm. But I'm, I'm completely uh, disagreeing with the number <laughs> of <laughs> seats which are projected. Right. There's no okay, way... Okay, fair enough. Just, just, just the contest, quickly, quickly. Yeah, see, see very people should happen. be, we should be actually talking Telangana more because the past record historically as Rahul Shankar and also the empirical data shows the BJP always becomes stronger in Lok Sabha, in Karnataka. It's not going to yeah, be in weaker. Karnataka, and, and especially, and Nistula wanted to say something on Telangana. Telangana. I'm going to take a break. Also, please hold see, your thoughts. In yeah. Telangana, BJP always says no, that, you know, when in 84 elections, when they didn't win any seats, they won one seat. Right. In the United, uh, huh. uh, earlier erstwhile state of yes, Andhra Pradesh, yes. the Hanam Konda seat, which is now in huh. uh, Telangana and the other in Gujarat. So, hmm. they keep harping on that. They also talk about the demographic distribution, etc., etc. But what they did before the uh, assembly election, which is change the party president there, remove a, you know, uh, yeah. a very aggressive party president like Bandi Sanjay and get Mr. Kishan Reddy that hurt their party prospects in that Not state. Not just that, there was a talk on ground that the BRS and the BJP are in cahoots. Huh. And that vote, because, that anti-BRS vote yeah. moved en masse to the Congress and that's not going to happen in the central Lok Sabha elections is something which our reporters, our people on ground picked up from the no, sentiment from the still, voter on I ground. I feel that there whether is still a... a, 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 right. a, a where, whether, whether, whether Revan Reddy is still is able to garner, we'll see. Out. We'll see. Now, this is the number, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to take a break. Let's Let's look at this number, the big number as of now, 249 for the NDA, 70 for the INDIA, 331 declared, two more big states coming in, Odisha and Chhattisgarh. Will that increase the count and take the NDA par 272? Stay with us here on the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll. remaining today 98 seats to get to this 272 half a mark that secures them as per the news 18 mega opinion poll a third term 
INDI alliance is at 61. Will they get up close to about 200? Will they become a stronger opposition than they were in 2019? 2024 will we see perhaps a little more opposition and heft for the opposition as far as the parliamentary constituencies and at the centre in parliament is concerned. We'll have to wait and watch. Let's try and get this, break this down before we get comments from our uh, guests here. We already have the numbers for the next most important state. The only bastion in the south where the BJP often has ruled the roost. Irrespective of who's in power at the state, they have returned big, big gains at the centre. The state of Karnataka, the first of the states, the 12 states we're going to cover in this part 2 of the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll. The state of Karnataka, 28 seats, 25 to the NDA, 3 to the Congress. 25-3, is it the same score as the last time around? JDU this time around with the NDA. Now, we are looking at 25-3. Let's look at the vote share in Karnataka. The BJP claimed that despite their loss in the Vidhan Sabha, they net-net posted a 2% vote share gain. NDA is getting 58% vote share. The Congress with 35% vote share. The other 7% vote share. The calculations, do they actually work? Karnataka, park it there. Let's bring in another state. Let's just jump across to Assam. And let's see what's happening in that state. The big brother of the seven sisters in the northeast. This is NDA. 14 may say 12. Others take two. Nothing for the INDI alliance. So nothing for the Congress party. The others, the two. If the AIUDF is going it alone, is it the AIUDF or another of the breakaway parties but not part of the INDI alliance? It is 12 out of 14 seats for the NDA. That means the NDA already breaks into the 200 mark. 211 is the total number out of 284 seats now. So from 242, add another 42 seats, 284. The NDA already is there in Assam with a vote share of 49% NDA, 39% to the INDA alliance. Others are 16%. Overall score goes up to 284 for the NDA. 284 for out of 543 that that's the number of seats that we are calling out 211 for the nda INDI alliance 64 that's the score as of now let's come back to karnataka shivani so does it mirror or is why is no, it one it's less a, it's an interesting picture 25 is what bjp won last time hmm. this is the number from 2019 so they were nda was at 26 but this nda that we have formulated is actually with the bjp and the jds now together so one seat was jds 25 was bjp on its own so they could argue they've kind of retained that but congress only had one last time this time the congress is gaining uh, two to come to three and you also mentioned vote share around 35 percent the congress was about just shy of 32 percent last time around so they ha are gaining which is possibly not surprising anand because they've just you know won a big mandate as far as the state elections are concerned hmm. so this is how it was and actually if you include one other which was sumalata amrish the independent with the bjp then it was 27 for them out of 28. But Sumalata Ambrish were actually helped by the BJP. That was the story on ground because yeah, so of the sympathy. With but the BJP. now Rahul Shivshankar, Nistula Hebar, Javed Ansari, and Taisi Punapala. Can I? Yes. Can I? Can I? Come I and then you can take. Back on the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll, ladies and gentlemen, so far 331 seats, 249 to the NDA. They are not very, they are within striking distance. 23 seats they need more to cross that halfway number of 272. PM Modi may have set the benchmark very high, but in that race to, uh, to, the, to the parliament and into governance, 272 is the halfway mark, 543 seats in the Lok Sabha. If the NDA crosses 272, even before all the seats are declared, then are they in co on course to go at least 330 par? Let's try and see where it is. Where will they end on the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll? 
331 out of 543 seats have been declared. So there are still about 200 plus seats to go, ladies and gentlemen. So that means 212 seats to go. So is that possible? What do you think could be the final number? Stay with us. Let's bring in the next state in the mix, even as our guests are with us. Shivani Gupta with me here on the Magic Wall and Rahul Shiv Shankar on the Consulting Editor's Chair, the state of Odisha, ladies and gentlemen. Will they shake hands? Will they say, Chalo, bhai bhai mein no ladai. We'll have to wait and watch the BJD and the BJP. But it is 21 seats. The BJP will take 13. 8 to the BJD. So 13 more get added to the NDA kitty courtesy the BJP. Is this big gains for the BJP compared to the last time around where they had less than 10 seats? That's the big story, ladies and gentlemen. Is there a shift away from the BJD towards the BJP and is this the future course? Remember, Odisha votes simultaneously for the Vidhan Sabha and the Lok Sabha. What's going to happen there? Will they all say, bye bye, men, no ladai? Vote share. 40, 43, 15 and 2. 43% vote share for the BJP when it comes to the Lok Sabha election. Does that translate to any gains for them in the Vidhan Sabha? We'll have to wait and watch. Highly unlikely there they believe Naveen Babu is the right person and they trust the BJD, the ODA, popular, the voters. But when it comes to Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the ticket, Lok Sabha, it is the BJP that they depend on and that means a 43% vote share will give them a very rich return of 13 seats and that clearly is more because my memory serves me right, the BJP last time around had less than 10 seats. So that means there are gains here. What does that mean? Let's get into Chhattisgarh quickly. Let's understand Chhattisgarh is the magic 272 number getting up with the Chhattisgarh numbers. 11 seats. 11 seats and the BJP taking 10. Straight fight between BJP and the Congress and the Congress is flattened out and that's the big news. Here on the News 18 mega opinion poll, 363 out of 543, the NDA touches the halfway mark. 272 for the NDA. That's the big headline right now with the BJP taking 10 out of the 11 Chhattisgarh seats. Big gains and with nearly 180 seats still to be declared. 180 seats still to be declared. 16 states announced, 5 seats left. 118, 80 seats still to go. The, B, the NDA has crossed the halfway mark. Halfway mark, ladies and gentlemen, 272 for the NDA on the News 18 mega opinion poll. That means with 180 seats still to go, 180 seats you can see the bottom of the screen, 363 out of 543, 180 seats still to go. And the NDA has crossed the halfway mark on the News 18 mega opinion poll. That's the big flash, the big news. Here on the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll, ladies and gentlemen, the NDA crosses the halfway mark with still a lot to go. That's you. There you go. That's the big one. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the B led BJP and the NDA, boom, crosses the halfway mark. 272 plus for them. It's the big, big win. What does that mean? How many more out of the 180 seats that are left? Are these BJP Pradhan or this is where the BJP has to do a lot of ghamasan? That's the interesting part, ladies and gentlemen, because how many more from these 180 can they win to get closer to that Charso Park target for the NDA? That's the big, big question. 130 out of those 180, is that even to possible to touch 400? Interesting. Yeah. But very yeah. interesting numbers coming out of Odisha and one wonders, is this why the BJD may consider an alliance with the BJP? Because look at the reversal. The BJD last time had 12 seats, they're losing four according to our uh, poll. So they're coming down to eight. The BJP was at eight, they're gaining five. So going to 13 and the uh, Congress had one, they're losing that one. Vote share wise, the BJP is now being projected at 43%. They're gaining three from the BJD, two from the others. So the BJD comes down to 40 and the BJP goes up to 43. That's the vote share difference. But this is such a story for the BJP because this is one of those states where you know that the uh, elections happen at the same time with the Lok Sabha elections, the state and the, uh, the assembly and the Lok Sabha elections. 
and even though the BJP has been trying to inch up as far as the Lok Sabha tally is concerned, hmm. they don't really make a dent as far as assembly Let's is concerned. Let's quickly look at... Uh, Naveen Patnaik okay. always considered yeah. very strong as hmm. far as Odisha is concerned, but it looks like the BJP could become the single largest party here. Single other, the single largest party as far as Lok Sabha is concerned. Vidhan Sabha will it are a bit different. Yeah. And Chhattisgarh, if we, let's, let's quickly yeah, look let's at quickly 2019. Yeah, let's quickly go across uh, to Chhattisgarh as well. And Chhattisgarh, of course, you know, this is one of those states that they have rest back as well. So, uh, mm. they will hope that this is going to be an important one for them. So, this is how it stood. They're gaining a couple of seats one here. Seat. I think one, one seat. seat here. Ten, ten, from ten, out of, ten out of eleven. Nine and two last time around. Now, Rahul Shivshankar, Javed Ansari, Nistula Ebar will also go across to our guests on the other side are joining us. Thaseen Punawala has jumped, jumped out of the studio. Nalin Mehta is standing there, managing editor, money control on... Uh, Q, why don't you walk in into the set, sir? It's all right. It's all happening live here. Our viewers are catch up on. Please come and sit. Rahul Shivshankar, well, five surprised. seats, five seats plus in Odisha, one seat plus in Chhattisgarh. Uh, some gains in Telangana. Is the BJP set to do better than three not three right now with 180 seats still to go? Well, remember that what we are projecting are NDA numbers. Mm. There are also certain states where the BJP is in an alliance. So we need to now fine-tune and go back to all these numbers mm. and set the NDA mm. aside. So we need yeah. to find out how many JDS is going to win, how yeah. many JDU will win, etc., etc., and get to the BJP number. Yeah. But uh, it does appear that there is a pro-incumbency sentiment now. It can be easily said for Mr. Modi. Yeah. And the fact is that the India Alliance has a lot of work to do. Perhaps it made a mistake yeah. in not going in there and presenting a clear message and a unified front because mm. it is absolutely now clear that uh, the Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, enjoys mm. a huge advantage in the public imagination when it comes to the national elections. He carries the BJP across the threshold mm. and he seems to have done it now, third election. And if that does happen, he will be, after Nehru, the only other Prime Minister to have repeated his term in office thrice consecutively. Of course, there's a huge debate about whether we should even count Mr. Nehru's first term because it was, as, as you all know, appointed and did not win a mandate as such. But that's a different, that's a whole different... See, 33 ball. seats that the yeah. BJP needs to win right now from here, not, not necessarily 33 seats. NDA is uh, right now at 272, yes. not the BJP necessarily. The BJP. But out of 180 seats, the remaining states, ladies and gentlemen, we've done about 16 states. We've got five states to go and these states are not going to be easy. So let's do the there, math very there quickly. There is also a remaining 25 JDS seats. Anand, Rahul, there the, are remaining 25 seats out of the 543 which we have not actually gone ahead and polled or uh, surveyed because we have covered 518 Lok Sabha constituencies. But those numbers we will extrapolate. We will extrapolate just given the trends and how these areas will vote because these are all very, very small groupings which have been left out out of the remaining states and union territories. But that we'll come to later. We'll cross that bridge in just a bit. We also have Amitabh Tiwari with us and we have Sanju Verma of the BJP, National Spokesperson of the BJP joining us. Namaste and Jai Hind. Thank you very, very much. Amitabh ji, quickly asking you, the gains that are expected. And uh, in Odisha, do you believe the BJP turning the tables on the BJD? See, in, in Odisha, uh, since the past two elections, BJP has been making some headway. It won one seat in 2014, then eight, and then you are predicting 13 seats. Hmm. So there is a simultaneous election which happens there, and BJD has been benefiting out of this simultaneous election, getting more seats in Vidhan Sabha as well as in Lok Sabha. So we have not seen a very split voting pattern in Odisha as yet. But this shows that th there could be a split voting pattern hmm. or there could even be trouble for Naveen Patnaik in the Vidhan Sabha elections. Hmm. I mean, those numbers you don't have, we'll have to wait and see. Hmm. See, what happens is when a party is pro-government or, hmm. or pro-central government and if it does not form an alliance with that party, then what happens is that it sends a very confusing signal to the voters. The voters believe that a vote for BJP is similar to a vote for BJD because BJD is pro-central government hmm. and because of the popularity of the Prime Minister in the eastern part of India, as East has been uh, now the focus along with the southern hmm. region, it seems that the BJP is doing well. 
the hmm. alliance probably has fell off because conceptually number one and number two party hmm. cannot do an alliance hmm. in any state that's hmm. why we have aap and congress not forming an alliance in punjab right. cpm and congress not forming an alliance in kerala right. whereas chatisgarh is on expected lines right. 180 seats are more to go but it seems that you have already covered most of the southern states hmm. except for andhra it seems yes so it means that the 180 uh, seats which are going to come are not that all weak for the bjp so there are some strong states also mm. in those 180 seats including the northeast mm. and bjp mind you is the number one party in the northeast mm. along with its various maharashtra bacha hai partners. sir maharashtra so we'll bacha hai bangal bacha ah, hai correct to ek maharashtra 48, bacha hai 48 maharashtra bengal correct. 42 that itself is 90 seats correct so 90 is yeah so 90 is is coming from there and we'll have to wait and see because these could be the bell weather yeah 25 coming in from in, andhra pradesh in, in also in bjp's mission for 370 yeah. 25 coming yeah. in from yeah. andhra pradesh andhra also. so has, these are not BJP going to be easy alliance partner so because a new old ha. alliance partner yeah. so andhra bjp has a new alliance partner ha. so some seats could be added there as well hmm. and we'll have to see maharashtra and and west bengal ha purane dost jo root kar chale gaye ab wapas aa gaye this this story happens quite often yeah. ladies and gentlemen but yes so on in the case of orisha uh, i i really would have believed these numbers uh, had this seesaw not happened over the alliance so uh, the local uh, unit of the bjp has been against this alliance because they feel that they were they had a good chance this time navin was aging he had appointed a you know like a semi successor sort of a person who may or may not be very popular hmm. among the people and so they felt this was the best time for the bjp to kind of really go hammer and tongs but i think uh, this 370 figure and the the goal of a 50% vote share across the country that has kind of pushed uh, the bjp into considering an alliance of this kind mm. and uh, as amitabh tiwari said the one and two party going mm. into an alliance then there are of there course are people who will who will be voting against uh, navin patnayak who would have preferred to vote for the bjp they might shift their vote to the third party there which is the congress well, and I, that yeah. seems to have given locally at least from what i have heard a little bit of a fillip to the congress saying okay we've been saying for a very long time hmm. that they are in bed with each other and this is you know this is when yes. we, they, you know like they have completely staged so, it yeah. rahul nalin and sanju have not spoken yet yeah. on this this is an important trend now we're seeing in the south we're seeing the regional players barring of course uh, tamil nadu ceding a little ground now to mm. the national players mm. so this is a bit of a reversal happening we haven't obviously looked at andhra as yet so we don't know but in telangana in karnataka and of course uh, in uh, in uh, uh, the state of uh, kerala where of course the left and the congress are historically and the bjp is getting in so obviously that remains a story but uh, and now in orissa you have the third party the regional satrap basically losing out is this a larger trend that we're seeing so i think what's happening is that we talked about this earlier in the morning rahul you wrote a piece on this as well um for the last say 15 odd years uh, from the kamandal mandal days um is the regional satraps who kind of held sway in large in, large, in a large number of states um and as a congress ceded space what's happening now is many of the regional satraps are now towards the winter of their lives so there is a succession issue in most of these states and there is also an alternative which is the bjp as a national party is far more aggressive than the congress in its heyday in the 80s and okay. so on so what's happening now is that let's yeah so finish make your point so the point i'm trying to make is that yeah. whether it's a lalu whether it's a uh, whether it's it's the badals in punjab whether it's navin patnaik here uh, with barring barring tamil nadu or, or barring dmk uh, in almost every major state with the regional satrap and and, and that includes mamta banerjee too there is a question mark over tamil what nadu. after so, said, so even the, in, according to our survey even the dmk is losing ground in tamil nadu let yeah. me just bring in uh, sanju varma sanju varma now there are three issues that the prime minister has been banging on with one is parivar vad and obviously the regional parties are built around very strong individuals who have you know a a sort of dynastic sort of uh, bent of mind and secondly of course performance and third is the ram issue and going back to the civilizational ethos etc etc all of this seems to be working for you are you a bit disappointed though that the bjp is not careering towards that 370 mark as perhaps you might have hoped 
you know, Rahul, uh, without wishing to sound offensive, no, no. I remember prior to the Chhattisgarh 2023 assembly poll results coming out, every political pundit worth his salt said, Bhupesh Baghel to dobara wapis aare hai, nobody gave us a chance in hell uh, to form the government. And I think the BJP surprised everybody. The reason I'm, uh, you know, giving this example is, um, just to digress a little bit from your point, I was particularly excited about the Odisha numbers, where you give us 13 seats and you give uh, the uh, BJD uh, 8, uh, that is 4 down from its tally last time. You know, something which nobody seems to be mentioning here is that there is one thing which is very common to Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh and Odisha. We all know that in Chhattisgarh, mm -hmm. tribal population is 31% of the total population. In Madhya Pradesh, that number is about 25 to 26%. The state with the third largest tribal population in India at 23% is Odisha and about 9% of, uh, you know, uh, the total uh, tribal population in India's rural and semi-urban areas comes from Odisha, particularly districts like Keunjhar or Mayurbhanj, which is where Draupadi Murmu comes from. So the first point I'm making is that the tribal vote share of the BJP is going to consolidate in a big way in favor of the Modi-led alliance. Don't forget in 2019, we had a 65%, yes, that is the number I did my homework, we had a 65% vote share amongst the tribal community vis-a-vis -vis the other side, as in the combined opposition, what have you, which had a 29% vote share. So if this 69% goes up to 71 or 72 percent, given the phenomenal results which we saw in Madhya Pradesh despite a almost two decade old anti-incumbency, at least a perceived one, and you know, getting a, a 46 percent vote share in Chhattisgarh with 54 seats. If we have to extrapolate what we did in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh onto Odisha, I think we may not even get uh, just 13 what you're saying, the number could actually be 15 or 16, what which means Odisha will be for the BJP in 2024 okay. what Bengal Nalim. was for us in 2019. Okay, Nalim, can I just bring you in on the yeah. piece that I wrote this morning, exactly what I was talking about, that the BJP has evolved a superset of uh, various um, uh, rainbow sort of uh, coalitions. They've yeah. taken in the Dalits, they've taken in the EBCs, etc. Mm. And who are they hitting most? They're hitting those parties that were estranged from the Congress. And that's the regional sort of parties. And I think that's really what so, we're so seeing So the now. BJP has a, multi a multitude of strategies of growth. In the Northeast has been mergers and acquisitions. In UP and in Hindi heartland, it's been a policy of social engineering where, where they've expanded the social umbrella, added uh, uh, a large number of OBCs, particularly non-Yadav OBCs, uh, with, uh, with the Dalits, particularly non-Yadav Dalits. Uh, the tribal uh, footprint of the BJP significantly increased. In, in several states, whether it's West, uh, in, see the, whether it's West Bengal, uh, whether whether it's Odisha, in several states, in, in Bengal, for example, it grew by essentially uh, outsiders who came into the party. That's right. Not just that, 39% of their vote in 2019 was from the Communist parties. No, absolutely. Right. So hmm. essentially, in these states, the BJP also grew as the anti-establishment yeah. party. Right, the party of and the let's not forget and the that's true the for Telangana too. It in the past, but the yeah. problem for the BJP has been that in the states where it has expanded, yeah. uh, it is it's gone two steps forward and then one step backwards. So Odisha is sort of Odisha is a state Same. where it's consistently been Going becoming up. the okay. number two party. And if these uh, if these poll numbers hold up, it's an exact reversal of what happened last time. Can See, I just quickly of, bring in Sanju? I wanted hmm. to ask her uh, the big question that's coming to everybody's mind, Sanju. After these numbers, these are of course Lok Sabha projections. But uh, your thoughts uh, on the assembly, because Odisha is one of those states that goes to polls together with the Lok Sabha. So if you are saying that these numbers are even shorter to your expectations, give us a sneak peek of what you think about assembly elections in Odisha. You know, uh, when it comes to assembly elections, I have to make one very pertinent point. Uh, if you remember, uh, just prior to the Chhattisgarh assembly elections, uh, we made, you know, barely one year uh, back, uh, we made Arun Sao the party president in Chhattisgarh. He is obviously now the deputy CM. And we have effected a change uh, within the organization, uh, you know, in Odisha also. Earlier, the BJP president in Odisha was Samir Mahanti. But now, we have a gentleman called Manmohan Samal. And I tell people Manmohan Samal is uh, the anomaly version, uh, you know, for the BJP in Odisha. He has excellent grassroots connection. Uh, you know, uh, he's young for a politician at 64, and he's somebody who also halted, uh, you know, the uh, re-election of Suryabanshi Suraj from Dhamragar. 
uh, in 2009, and that is when he rose to fame. So I think when it comes to new states, where earlier the contest was between, uh, say, the BJ. B and you know uh, maybe a Congress or any other uh, party from the other side, but now the binary has shifted to BJP versus BJD. In Chhattisgarh, BJP versus Congress. In Telangana, BJP versus Congress. When it comes to Lok Sabha, uh, you know uh, the BRS obviously is a factor only in the assembly elections. So I think that the organizational restructuring with Manmohan Samal at the helm of affairs is what is going to do the magic for us. In the assembly elections and the Lok Sabha elections as well. With well, the last time around, uh, the story was a little different. But larger picture, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to remember this: 363 seats out of 543 that have been declared, 180 seats still to go. The more important part is: is the BJP and the NDA going to return a better number than 2019? Is it going to fall short of the expectations or the benchmark set by the captain of the ship, that is Prime Minister Narendra Modi, with respect to 400 par for the NDA and 370 par for the BJP? And if yes, then by how much? Because falling short is all right. But if they are doing better than 2019, then the opposition has some serious worries. 180 seats, of which we counted 90 from two states, that is Maharashtra and Bengal. Add to that the state of Andhra Pradesh and we go more than 100 seats, more than 100 seats, 115 seats actually, if you were to see, from states where the BJP will be a little worried because there is a tussle, there is a regional satrap, there has been mixes and you've, you've stitched alliances. As of now, do you see the BJP and the NDA comfortably positioned to do better than 2019? Quickly doing this, Javedji, starting with you. Or where okay. do you think is the problem? Look, that's the main... That's the million dollar question. Will they not just do better than 2019, but will they get to 370? We can quibble about the numbers, but there's no, no sane person will bet, bet against the BJP winning this election. Mm. INDI alliance no, is at 71. Does, no, no, does that, does that the, worry just you? Just because the Prime Minister has said 370 I mean, is a benchmark. No, 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 I mean, he's winning let's a look at the opposition. Yes, 10 years so. in power. No. And you have uh, no signs of income. But this is what happened in Bengal he, too, he right? They did the very benchmark. well in Bengal, but not be what they projected. No, but that's so it fine. almost became this a loss. This is not a losing cause, Shivani. This is a winning cause. I mean, right the, now, the BJP is probably short of individually of 272 by what? About See, a dozen seats? No, 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 no. See, the answer to this question. See, it's not about the other question, the flip side of this. Congress less than 40 if the India Alliance is at 71 right now? Is that a worry? Less than 50 seats for the Congress party. That means there is no solid opposition in, in Parliament. Assuming, Again, assuming that they get 70, even then what kind of an opposition will that be? Hmm. If the BJP is getting 370 so, or plus 370 or, or, or thereabouts, more of the what same. kind of an opposition? Is, is that a statement same. of the BJP's performance or the opposition's non-performance? Largely absent from this conversation so far, we will try and get him in. But yes, Nistula, you're saying something. See, I wanted to answer the question that you had put uh, the first time to Javi Ji about where will they hit out, hit it out of the ball, you know, ballpark the way the Prime Minister wants. I would like to kind of quote back what Amit Shah had told me in the 2019 election when he was party president and I had interviewed him. And he said, wherever you're looking for an election, that is not where the election's at. I had chosen some 113 seats uh, where we've never won or we've come second and we, I worked hard. He said, you were there with me in Telangana. I said, yes, the first time that you started, you started from Nalgonda. He said, you'll see the election is there. And, the, and they actually won nearly 80 out of those 113 vulnerable seats that he had identified, which is why their tally went up. Yes. So now... Uh, the 370 has to come from places where they have not maxed yeah, out. So the states you should so be looking at is uh, West Bengal, Odisha, and uh, no Maharashtra. They had maxed out, but mm. Maharashtra is in trouble now because mm. it's an election. Maharashtra which is from they down have zero. not maxed out because Maharashtra they maxed out when they were in conjunction with the Shiv Sena. Right, now they have not maxed. Maharashtra, like no the BJP Maharashtra. out of 48 contested only 25 last frame. time. This time around, are they going to contest 30? And what will be the wins in this new Samikaran? Those 48 are very crucial. So those are the Tho states that you need to. And of course without, Bengal. Of course without Bengal. Without Maharashtra, Anand. The BJP is about 12 short. I mean, let's put this in perspective. When was the last time a Prime Minister came back for the third time consecutively? Nehru. Rahul. Nehru, yeah. Well, if, I mean, if, where is the, the debate the here? Is, no, no, that with is not this the election debate. result, if this election, and, and as Javed said, no sane person would 
uh, mm. kind of bet, bet against again. this result. The only question is, what How is the much, margin, yeah. right? Uh, whether it's 300 or 370, you know, what's Haan, 310 that? 310 or 370 that, that, that is a debate. That, that's right? the fight. No, the quality uh, of the victory is the debate. Now, listen right. to this statistic so, which I the began point by I'm saying, listen to this. BJP won yeah. 224 Third. seats with 50% plus vote share in 2019, mm. 88 more than 2014. If it wins another 50 of these, 88, you see where the number is going to be. Correct. Now, yeah. It's not just the, the, is, the quality the of the, the victory. The is that after two terms, if you win a victory like this, yes. the, the Prime Minister Modi, will, after three terms, will end up as the Prime Minister who's had the largest number of years as Prime Minister after Nehru. Nehru right. ended at 16 right. years right. plus. And and Shandra Gandhi house. at 15 years, and but an only upper 11 house. of them were contiguous. And, and Nalin and Upper House, where the numbers will dramatically change yeah. because guess who's losing so, out? So that is why the first 100 days after Lok Sabha 2024 results, May 2024, will be very interesting. Yes, quickly, Shivani. I wanted to add because Sanju Varma made that point about the tribal population in Odisha. So this is the yeah. chart from 2019 Lok Sabha elections. These are tribal dominated seats. Six of them out of the 21. The BJP had actually won half of them. They have a vote share about 34. BJD two and Congress was one. So this time around it would be interesting to see if the factor she says is one of the big factors in Odisha and the popularity because of you know the tribal president and things like that. Then they should no, be sweeping the these seats. I think the popularity that will translate in terms of whatever breakups and you were saying is the Labharti factor. The benefits accruing because of the schemes, the welfare schemes reaching right down to the grassroots. The numbers have been put out by Rahul Shiv Shankar, Nalan Mehta, BJP spokespersons and largely by the people who have benefited. If they come back and pay him back saying thank you for doing what you have done for us, then these numbers should hold or if not get better. And then the larger question is, is it these subgroupings that we should look at? Or should we look at it all in a combined to say this is welfare for all and that's why the person who's provided that welfare wins it all, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take a short break. The halfway mark, 272, has been breached. The three states that are very important, that account for nearly 115 of 180 seats remaining. Coming up next, one of the critical states is Andhra Pradesh. But that rocket of the NDA is flying, ladies and gentlemen. Stay with us. We'll be right back with the Andhra numbers. Except for these two constituencies, can you tell me as of today, is the BJP seriously in a fight? I'm not saying that the Prime Minister has not gone there uh, the most after any political state. I'm not saying they're not making ways. I'm not saying the organization is charged. I mean, it simply isn't there. If this is true, if this is true, I should give up political consult, uh, political analysis. It isn't, it doesn't exist. Okay. Nobody is giving them no, those no, five. No, no, hold do on you, to do that. you think five seats? Yeah. Five. five seats. What we can very proudly say, most widespread, comprehensive and exhaustive opinion poll. The News 18 mega opinion poll. Day 1, these are the states that were covered. Uttar Pradesh, where it was a clear sweep for the NDA. 77, 77 out of 80 seats to the NDA. Then, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Bihar. These were some of the standout states out of the nine states that were covered, what are the big takeaways? Historic 77 seats for the BJP in Uttar Pradesh. If you look at the numbers. And in Tamil Nadu, the NDA. The NDA gets and breaks open its account. Five seats there. 30 seats to the DMK Congress India Alliance. If you look at the states of Kerala, 14. 14 seats to the UDF, four to the LDF. So, the LDF pinching back four seats, but two seats to the NDA. Many were very surprised whether that will really happen. In Bihar, it's 39 out of 40, 38 out of 40. Last time it was 39 out of 40. This time it's 38 out of 40 for the NDA. INDI Alliance getting two seats. So, that's how the breakaway at this point is. What are the take takeaways? The survey suggests that the BJP is sweeping the heartland. The survey also gives us the takeaway that it's a historic win and never before for the NDA in Uttar Pradesh. The expansion of the entire saffron footprint is also visible in the south. Pollsters are predicting Tamil Nadu surge. BJP set to open its account in Kerala. All of these aspects stand out in these takeaways, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get to the numbers. We have our guests already with us. 
let's get to the numbers now the overall picture is right next to me we can show 174 seats and 61 but let's try and get to the first numbers karnataka and assam we are going to talk about karnataka and assam in the studios with me javed ansari tasim punawala nistula hebar rahul shiv shankar and shivani gupta with us rahul shiv shankar quickly if you want to just go back to what happened yesterday Day one of the mega opinion poll here at News 18. Yeah, thanks uh, Anand. Uh, let me just quickly break it down. 174 out of 242 called yesterday with NDA needing 100 out of 301 more for a simple majority. To today, we'll just have to see that conversion rate. It has to win one out of three seats that we called today. If it needs to just get to where it was, past the halfway mark. Not even to where it was, in fact. And can it get that sort of ratio, one out of three seats as we project them? That's the million dollar question. But the good news, at least for the NDAs, they'll take heart from this in Uttar Pradesh, plus 7%, vote share swing in its favor over 2019, Bihar 5%, in Haryana 4%, in Delhi 1.5%, in Punjab 3.5% swing in its favor, and in the two states that are actually creating ripples and this survey is making a lot of news for is the projection on Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Tamil Nadu 10% vote share jump. Back on, ladies and gentlemen, with the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll. We've got to tell you, this is a Mega Opinion Poll. The News 18 Poll Hub has gone to 518 Lok Sabha constituencies and got you the details. We will also extrapolate the balanced 25 seats and give you the final projections. But these are opinion polls. And if we get it right, we'll take the credit. If we don't, then blame the News 18 Poll Hub. But that's in jest. This is just an indication, ladies and gentlemen. This poll was conducted in February 2024. The elections are going to be, or the polls are going to be between April and May 2024. A lot can change. A lot of momentum can be gained by the NDA and the BJP. Or perhaps there can be a shift towards the INDIA and the opposition. We have to wait and watch. But right now, this is the biggest testament or perhaps sampling of the Janta Ke Man Ki Baat. Bharat ki janta ke man ki baat. It's perhaps the biggest sampling that can be done. 1,18,000 plus respondents, 218 respondents for every Lok Sabha constituency. For every Lok Sabha seat, at least three Vidhan Sabha constituencies have been polled or have been surveyed. And these Vidhan Sabha constituencies have been picked up by a random sampling. We are proud of this effort because it's a gargantuan effort. Preceding this 1,18,000, there was a sampling of 3.5 lakh, which was done in November. So before and after Ram Lala, a lot of impacts have happened. 2023 to 2024, in a span of 2-3 months, a lot has happened. And even this today, day 2, as we come to 16 states so far, day 1, 9 states, so far 7 states, in this continuous broadcast here at CNN News 18 and across the News 18 network, the next number to be shown is another state of the south the only state of the south that remains and that is Andhra Pradesh. So far, the NDA is right at the halfway mark. What happens with Andhra Pradesh? Let's understand. What are the numbers? YSRCP, 7 seats out of 25. The NDA now, with TDP and Pawan Kalyan, Jana Sena coming together with the BJP, 18 seats. No seat for the Congress party in, Tala, in Andhra Pradesh. No seat for the Congress or the INDI alliance in Andhra Pradesh. It's between the NDA and YSRCP and this coming together of the BJP, Chandra Babu Naidu's TDP and Pawan Kalyan's Janasena is translating into a 50% vote share for the NDA, 9% more than the YSRCP. And if it's a straight race between, it's a two-horse race, the first to get past 50% vote share 
invariably takes most of the seats. And that's what we are seeing, ladies and gentlemen, that 18 out of the 25 are going to the NDA. Rahul Shivshankar, so, yes, so no, possible. So, the magic, magic of 2014 recreated. Yes. Except at that time, of course, uh, the Jansena was a little outside of the alliance, giving it tacit support. At that time, it was BJP and TDP. So, that's come together. But what this shows, worryingly for Jagan, is that his Dalit vote bank has left him. If you look at Jagan's cabinet, for example, it's very interesting. 66% of the cabinet berths were given to SCSTs. A little proportion of that to OBCs. And of course, uh, you had the minorities. And that's the key, the retention of that. And that we have to say, Rahul, happening. that Andhra is also voting simultaneously. Vidhan right. Sabha and Lok Sabha simultaneously. But Lok Sabha, the picture last time around, Shivani you was... You know, interestingly, 20, last time is the only comparison we can make. Because 2014 Lok Sabha elections were undivided Andhra Pradesh. It was after those general elections that Andhra Pradesh and Telangana were divided. So these are 2019 results. This is the only result we can go for. And look at the reversal that is taking place. So YSR CP is losing 15 and coming down to 7 according to our opinion poll. The NDA, which is the, um, the alliance of the TDP and the uh, uh, you know, Pavan Kalyan and the BJP, which was not the case in 2019, is actually going up by 15 to 18. Very quickly, just want to uh, you know, show you that the NDA numbers that you see 3, these yellow seats is actually all TDP. The BJP did not win anything in yeah, 2014. So the TDP was brought down and it was shown its place and Chandrababu Naidu was given a nice rap on the knuckles. He made the wrong call. Have they learned that? Have they learned their lessons? We'll have to wait and watch, ladies and gentlemen, right now, quickly, before we go back to our guests and get them to think about and dwell upon Andhra Pradesh, we have to do one more state. Let's look at the state of Jharkhand. Let's try and understand how Jharkhand is going to score. This time around in the News 18 mega opinion poll, Jharkhand will be accounting for 14 Lok Sabha seats. In Jharkhand, the NDA taking 12. NDA taking 12, INDI Alliance 2. That means the NDA is thin so par. 302. 302 out of 18 states and 302 for the NDA with 12 seats from Jharkhand. 272 plus 18 plus 12 and they are par 300. They are at 302 seats, the NDA overall. Jharkhand 14 seats, the NDA getting 58% vote share. INDIA 32% vote share, others taking 10%. So clearly the BJP stealing a march, going up to about 60% vote share, ladies and gentlemen. And if you look at the overall score, it is already thin so par for the NDA. Big, big gains for the NDA, comfortably placed at this point. We've taken 25 seats of Andhra Pradesh, 14 seats of uh, Jharkhand. So 39 seats have been added to the previous tally of 331. We'll put out the overall score, the total number of seats out of 543. We still have, we still have some big states to go. We still have more than 100 seats to account for. But these seats, what they are doing, ladies and gentlemen, are taking the NDA to the 302 score of the BJP already. Teen so par to ho gaye. Char so par honge ki ni is the big question. Let's look at it. How does it stand out right now? As we open it up for our viewers, there you go, drop down and here it opens. The entire arc and this is the halfway mark of 272. 302, 402 out of 543 seats. And out of those 402, 302 are with the NDA, way past the halfway mark, comfortable. The Indy Alliance at 73, struggling to get to the 100 number. 27 others. That grouping is also getting sizable and it's getting bigger. Worry for the INDI Alliance that this sizing is also getting thicker. Which way will that lean could depend. But does it matter for this grouping? 302 already. 402 out of 543 seats, so 101 seats to go. What's going to be the score? That's going to be very, very important. 141 seats, beg your pardon. 141 seats to go. Let's go across to our guests. These numbers, do they surprise you? Tehseen Punawala, <coughs> he's going very fast on the computer. Kisi bhi tarah se isko number ko ghuma nahi sakte, sir. Ye to paar ho gaya. Total reversal. Anand, 
again, I have a lot of respect, but if elections were won on, on um, numbers like these, and why even have elections? This afternoon I was on another channel, just slightly diverting, but the anchor kept interrupting me and said, oh, but how, we can't spend so much money on elections. So I told him very politely, if election ni karate, WhatsApp pe karate, or we know who can be Prime Minister. See, I'm in opposition. I don't support the BGP. It is my duty to find faults. I still stand to my gun. Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Telangana, and even Andhra, these numbers don't add up. I respect your poll. I think they don't add up. I think the Karnataka, the BJP won't get as much as it will. I don't think it's getting that in Telangana. I think your numbers are flipped in Telangana. They're definitely not getting in Tamil Nadu. I can't see how they get it. And even in Andhra, I think you have a little bit of surprise. I'm not saying Congress is winning Andhra Pradesh. I'm not going to say that. Though, uh, though the uh, Prashant Kishore said that Congress is winning Andhra Pradesh in the state assembly. But these numbers simply don't add up. The match doesn't add up. The chemistry doesn't add up. Sir Sir, this is a this is well, 218 respondents. Because there has been 218 respondents. In Javed Ansari and Dalit Mehta want to say something. Ji, 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 ji. So it no, does so add up. You, you can quibble about the numbers, but the larger picture is that the BJP is winning and winning, True. winning well. Uh, I I have my doubts as as far as Kerala, as far as Tamil Nadu, as far as Telangana are concerned. But that's. I but mean, in Andhra Pradesh, Javed, those, sir, those you agree minor. with the numbers, with the TDP coming back, with the BJP? And yes, all? It, it has given them a distinct edge. Uh, 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 but what the question is, what happens to Jagan? I yeah. mean, what, what wrong did he do? Hmm. For five years, he had this government, went out of his way, and now suddenly he's been left high and dry. Hmm. So what does it say I mean, for the, you know, how the BJP treats its allies? The debate is to your left and right, yes. It's not a question of how the BJP treats its allies. The BJP cannot ally with Jagan Mohan Reddy. I don't, uh, there's a large swath of people in the Sangh Parivar who will not condone this thing yeah. due to uh, religious reasons and the, pol the kind of politics that BJP plays in that state. Hmm. They can take their support in the legislative yeah. matters in Rajya Sabha, etc. But they have definite issues with uh, Jagan Mohan Reddy. Having said that, Naidu has said all sorts of things about Prime Minister Modi when he left mm. in 2018. What he found out very quickly was that the Congress's vote bank and his Kamma vote bank are mutually antithetical. They can never, ever, ever vote together. He got out of that, got into all sorts of, you know, legal trouble. His uh, party workers were being beaten and, you know, his party offices were being attacked. And I remember he gave me an interview in 2021 where he, for the first time, he said on record saying that I want the N I want to get back into the NDA. At that time, I had spoken to somebody in the BJP, very high, high up, who had said that this is a call that will be taken closer to the election if we see that we have something to gain uh, from so, it. So now, after Naidu's arrest, there is a feeling that he might be getting some. Sympathy, sympathy uh, votes you know, in Andhra Pradesh, I, I'll go and, with and that Kamma vote bank, even if it's not with the, if, with, uh, if, even if it's not, uh, uh, if even if Naidu is not in a position to uh, fully get them, they're three, not coming to the BJP. So whatever Andhra, they have to get, they have Kamba, to get it Kapu in and the Reddies. And Kamba, the Kapu and the Reddies. So, yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, and the Dalits, of course, which uh. are a very, very significant yeah. uh, part of the state. But I have of, an uh, issue with the, the numbers, state. though. But, but just, you, you just, also. just, just one second, just one second. It, it's very interesting because, you know, I think, uh, Javed Bhai, you made the point that what is Jagan done wrong to deserve this? Now, just ask his sister. Uh, she is the known unknown here. She has gone in with the Congress. Remember that her deciding to sort of keep out of the poll fray in Telangana helped the Congress. So she has, at least in the neighboring states, some influence. We don't know how that is going to play out for the Congress in Andhra Pradesh. But fundamentally, we constantly beat Mr. Modi on the head. Now, I'm not trying to be some sort of a cheerleader, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm just looking at some records. On this issue of squeezing the opposition out hmm. through all sorts of, you know, cases, etc., you just look at what has been happening hmm. in Andhra Pradesh for a while now. And, and you just have to ask, in fact, uh, what uh, Mr. Nistura Lachan. is saying is not wrong. A large number of people there have been building this campaign on the line that there is a tyrant sitting hmm. in the Vidhan Sabha. Whether it's right or wrong, I don't know. It might be sticking. And of course, look, there are castes at play. The reason the BJP went back to both the TDP or you know, whoever came back and signed up this alliance hmm is for a caste reason and, and you have to then begin to ask. Sir, in Andhra Pradesh, there is a 23% Kapu community which has no representation, has not been spoken to yet. So, but the Kamma is everybody is in the, in the mix there. I yeah. want to make a point here. What? We can quibble over the exactitude of the numbers and so on and this is a poll. Fact of the matter is, the BJP is the hungriest political party in India today. 
the fact of the matter is that it's maintaining what the numbers are showing. Uh, it's right. dominance in its old cold areas. In fact, in the Hindi heartland, with the numbers we saw yesterday, the strike rate seems to be higher yeah. than what it was in in 2019, right. which almost seemed impossible. How, okay. how can you go higher than from the studio the outside to those who are not in studio? Quickly, Sanju Verma and Amitabh Tiwari. Yes, Sanju. I think one thing which uh, you know uh, people are not taking cognizance of is the fact that in uh, a state like Andhra Pradesh, uh, while last time it was undivided Andhra, so the comparison uh, may not be absolutely uh, apple to apple. Hmm. Each time you cross a vote share of 48 or 49 percent, and you are giving the uh, NDA 50 percent, by that logic. You know, we are not going to be curtailed at 1818 alone. And you're giving Jagan Mohan Reddy's party seven seats. If we are going to cross 49% vote share, then BJP is going to romp home. I mean, the NDA is going to romp home with at least 23 or 24 seats because there are some states, be it a Gujarat, be it a Haryana, be it Andhra Pradesh or Jharkhand. Once you cross that 49-50% mark, then you take everything that is up for the asking. That is my point number one. And my point number two is, you know, uh, Taisin made a point that, you know, he doesn't believe in uh, the BJP uh, tally uh, when it comes to Karnataka, Telangana, what have you. Uh, as he said, he's duty bound to defend the Congress. But let me say one thing. In Telangana, in Lok Sabha 2019, our vote share was sub-20%, Rahul. Mm -hmm. Despite the sub-20% vote share, we managed to get four seats. And the Congress had a vote share of almost 3030% and they were still curtailed at two seats. So I go back to my most famous uh, argument which I repeat, uh, you know, uh, again and again whenever I'm on these kind of uh, number crunching shows. The Congress's Achilles heel is basically the inability to translate vote share into winnable seats. And please understand, I will end in 10 seconds. Last time even, if you look at the 2019 Jharkhand Lok Sabha elections, BJP had a 56% vote share and we got 12 seats. The Congress had almost a 35% vote share, but they still managed only two seats. With a 35% vote share, you're getting only two seats, which means you're not able to convert your vote share into votes. And that is where the BJP and NDA is going to score big time again in 2024. The big takeaway, the big takeaway and you know, I, I want to bounce this back off everyone here. The big takeaway is that the BJP seems to be expanding in regions where it wasn't really a presence. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, Narim, what do you make of that? Uh, if I can ask, uh, sorry, if we can bring in Amitabh Tiwari yeah, and then course. bring it back into sure. the studio. See, Amitabh the, Tiwari, how two, much of this is the Labhati factor? Tiwari. How much of this is getting old friends becoming, uh, you know, allies again, old allies becoming friends again? Uh, how much of it is that? See, it's a, it's a combination of both. I mean, both plus the leadership factor of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Beneficiaries are turning up in larger numbers to vote for the BJP election after election. And of course, the southern territory was a tricky territory for the BJP and they have, uh, or rather TDP has made a ghar wapsi of sorts in, into the NDA. If you see the Andhra numbers, YSR, CP is primarily getting damaged by the Congress party. Congress party, because of the re-induction of, or rather the induction of Sharmila, is gaining 5% vote share from 1% to 6%. And this is the vote share, the SC, ST and OBC vote share, which Congress is pulling. So hmm. Congress is damaging YSRCP here and also the fact that YSRCP has adopted a pro-NDA stance seems to have also angered its SC, ST and minority vote bank. Hmm. Amitabh, can I Whereas, just come in here? There has always been a... Very quickly, I want to understand from you, like if we were to talk about how the BJP is expanding, you know, just shooting off from what Rahul was trying to make, the point that he was trying to make, if we were to say that the BJP is actually expanding in areas where they didn't have seats or that much vote share, how much of these 18 seats that we are projecting are coming to the BJP or the TDP, we don't quite know. Now, TDP has always been the bigger player in Andhra Pradesh. Even this time around, they're contesting 17 seats and BJP is only contesting 6 seats. What is the, you know, fortunes of the BJP you see as far as seats are concerned? They won 2 in 2014. Mind you, that was undivided Andhra Pradesh, where the TDP and the BJP again did well over YSRCP. But of course, we know what happened last time around. So, is the BJP winning seats in Andhra Pradesh? No, see, it is winning seats in Andhra Pradesh because of the alliance with TDP. However, it is there for a long-term gain. 
because it sees that Chandrababu Naidu is perhaps in his last election and his son is perhaps not enjoys the same charisma as many other sons of regional parties politicians do and that is where the BJP sees an opening in Andhra Pradesh trying to or attempting to co-opt TDP and its voters in a longer term basis. Well, so that's the long-term strategy. Yes, let's bring it back into the studio. BJP expanding its footprint. You know, and, and what's the factors? Yeah, what look, are the they've factors? They've been trying to expand their footprint into Andhra a long time. Kapu, they got a Kapu state president. That didn't work. They tried to get in with the Kama votes saying that, look, your guy is on, on route to his sunset. Uh, you know, we, you better align with us. And he, they, there, was a, there were a lot of photo ops that Amit Shah also had with a lot of these big Kama uh, people in the Kama ecosystem. That hasn't worked. I think for this election, certainly they have decided to swallow their right. pride and said, okay, we will get in again through these people once more with feeling. And this time, they will again try to cannibalize. But them. the reality in Andhra politics, Rahul, is the fact that TDP is not going to let this go. BJP thinks it can cannibalize and piggy bank on the TDP. TDP will now, for the next five years, try and use whatever they grew out of this alliance to claw their way back into the regional politics. And that we'll see the Vidhan Sabha results. E exactly. Yeah. I was just coming to that. That we'll know, of course, in the Vidhan Sabha elections. But just look at the way, if this result begins to hold, mm. uh, Nalin, just look at the way politics is changing if this comes true in two, in two months. Mm. You have the BJP in ascendancy in the Lok Sabha. You have then all these opposition parties that could at least pose some sort of a challenge to the BJP in legislation, in the Rajya Sabha disappearing. You have the NDA now getting close to a majority, perhaps even a majority in the Rajya Sabha. This yeah. makes it, well, I'm saying this will no, consolidate. No, and, at and a larger changes. level, if, if, if 20, <clears throat> the 2019 mandate was a, was a pro-incumbency mandate for Narendra Modi, the 2024 mandate, if these numbers hold, uh, is fundamentally going to cement the complete change in the polity that Narendra Modi has heralded. Uh, the centre has moved significantly to the right. Uh, what was unthinkable earlier, what was unsayable earlier, is, is at the centre of the political discourse. Look at what has happened with the Ram Temple. Now, so there is a cultural and a deeper political matrix uh, uh, There is a conservatism taking place. Are taking root in Indian politics, uh, but the fundamental thing I, I would argue is not even conservative. I would okay. argue that, that I would uh, how Mr. Modi is, has kind of positioned it is as a civilizational repositioning. Okay, okay. so so you know, uh, but the, the other point I want to make is that you are also entering a new era where a lot of the certitudes of many of the state politics yes. those are changing because most of the satraps who were in power they are at the end of their political careers. Exactly. So you know, over the next five, six, ten years, who is going to replace them? Twilight Which are the political forces will replace them? BJP seems to be the one that's getting in. But quickly, two minutes here before we've got to take a break. Let's reflect on Jharkhand. Jharkhand, the, the numbers are the same as last time around as far as the seats are concerned. But there's a 3% uh, vote share bump for the BJP. Vote share bump for the BJP. Uh, Tehseen Punawala, would you like to say something about Jharkhand? What's happening there? Congress is supposed to be... I just agree with that. They're in power in alliance with uh, the Sorens, right? No, the Jharkhand numbers, I will not... Uh, I will not uh, comment too much on the Hindi heartland and, uh, and, and the capture this moment. <laughs> no, I no, I it's gotta all be being fair. captured. The Hindi, it's heartland, live the Hindi heartland is where and again the, the the north and the east is where the BJP is strong. So you can't you can't why? Uh, you can't uh, I think what the BJP has managed to do is not just hold its grounds as your data rightly showed yesterday. Their strike rate is better than what it was in 2019. And I keep telling this to Congress supporters but, but in particular. Why? I'll, 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 I'll just come to that. I keep telling Congress supporters tribals. that while I don't believe in this election, uh, these are the and states where the tribals. BJP is going to gain, it does not mean it won't gain in the next 10 years. In my lifetime, 15 years ago, who would have thought BJP would be the government in, uh, in Assam or would be in government 10 years ago or 12 years ago in, in Haryana. And here they are, their second largest party in Odisha and West Bengal. So the BJP is gaining winning? new grounds. But the opposition they, you know, cannot hold on to its grounds. Why are they winning in the north? I think there's a combination of factors. The combination of factors is the inability primarily of the opposition parties to get the pulse of the voters. You cannot call voters um, uh, uh, a 
गोबर वर्शिपर्स काउ वर्शिपर्स राक्षस गाव मूत्र ड्रिंकर्स यू हैव टू रिस्पेक्ट इट इफ द कांग्रेस बिमारू स्टेट इन द रूरल एरिया across the length and breadth of the country but largely in north india have gone up in the last 10 years ladies and gentlemen which had not happened in the previous times of the opposition is that a reflection why these numbers are favoring the prime minister led bjp that's the big question when we come back after the break ladies and gentlemen it's yet another big state it's yet another big state that we're going to talk about as of now The rocket is flying past the 300 number for the BJP. We've got you Jharkhand, we've got you Andhra Pradesh. When we come back, there are two, three big states that are left. They will hog the conversation all along, and that includes the state of Bengal. Stay with us. were covered Uttar Pradesh where it was a clear sweep for the NDA 77 77 out of 80 seats to the NDA then Tamil Nadu Kerala Bihar these were some of the stand out states out of the nine states that were covered what are the big takeaways historic 77 seats for the BJP in Uttar Pradesh if you look at the numbers and in Tamil Nadu The NDA, the NDA gets and breaks open its account. Five seats there, thirty seats to the DMK Congress India Alliance. If you look at the states of Kerala, fourteen, fourteen seats to the UDF, four to the LDF. So the LDF pinching back four seats, but two seats to the NDA. Many were very surprised whether that will really happen in Bihar. It's thirty-nine out of forty. Thirty-eight out of forty. Last time it was thirty-nine out of forty. This time it's thirty-eight out of forty for the NDA. INDI Alliance getting two seats. So that's how the breakaway at this point is. What are the take takeaways? The survey suggests that the BJP is sweeping the heartland. The survey also gives us the takeaway that it's a historic win and never before for the NDA in Uttar Pradesh. The expansion of the entire saffron footprint is also visible in the south. Pollsters are predicting Tamil Nadu surge. BJP set to open its account in Kerala. All of these aspects stand out in these takeaways, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get to the numbers. We have our guests already with us. Let's get to the numbers now. The overall picture is right next to me. We can show 174 seats and 61. But let's try and get to the first numbers. Karnataka and Assam we are going to talk about Karnataka and Assam in the studios with me Javed Ansari Tasim Punawala Nistula Hebar Rahul Shiv Shankar and Shivani Gupta with us Rahul Shiv Shankar quickly if you want to just go back to what happened yesterday day one of the mega opinion poll here at news 18 yeah thanks uh, anand uh, let me just quickly break it down 174 out of 242 call yesterday with nda needing 100 out of 301 more for a simple majority to today we'll just have to see that conversion rate it has to win one out of three seats that we called today if it needs to just get to where it was past the halfway mark not even to where it was in fact and can it get that sort of ratio one out of three seats as we project them that's the million dollar question but the good news at least for the ndas they'll take heart from this in uttar pradesh plus 7% vote share swing in its favor over 2019 bihar 5% in haryana 4% in delhi 1.5% in punjab 3 and a half percent swing in its favor and in the two states that are actually creating ripples and this survey is making a lot of news for is the projection on tamil nadu and kerala tamil nadu 10% vote share jump for 
the BJP giving it, at least according to our survey, five seats there out of 39. Huge number. It will be seen as a massive breakthrough. In Kerala, two out of 20, a jump of about 5% in the vote share. That's one of the reasons why these numbers are looking inflated. But let me give you some very interesting statistics. The quality of the victory will be the key. So today when we really look at this, we have to analyze if the BJP is actually doing better than it did in 2019. And if it's a tight election, then this number will tell us. What are the numbers? BJP won 224 seats in 2019 with 50% vote share. So those 224. Back on, ladies and gentlemen, on the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll. And we've just got a few more states to go. It's 302 and still counting for the NDA out of a total of 402 seats that we've declared so far out of 543. The News 18 Mega Opinion Poll went to 518 Lok Sabha constituencies. So the remaining 25, we will extrapolate based on the trends and we'll give you the final numbers. But we're going to make a slight departure. Before we set up the next state, the conversation point politically throughout the country today is the CAA, the Rules Notification to the CAA, Citizenship Amendment Act 2019. Union Home Minister Amit Shah sat down and spoke to ANI and cleared the air while taking the opposition to task on what he alleged is open, brazen misinformation and vote bank politics. Listen it. इस देश के अलसम अलसंख्यक माइनॉरिटीज या तो किसी और व्यक्ति को डरने की जरूरत नहीं है क्योंकि सीए में किसी की नागरिकता लेने का प्रावधान ही नहीं है सीए का कानून कभी वापस नहीं जाएगा और भारत की नागरिकता सुनिश्चित करना ये भारत का विषय है भारत की संप्रभुता का निर्णय है इसके साथ हम कोई कॉम्प्रोमाइज नहीं कर सकते जब विभाजन हुआ तब पाकिस्तान में 23 प्रतिशत हिंदू थे हिंदू और सिख थे आज 3.7 प्रतिशत बच गए कहाँ गए सारे इतने सारे तो यहाँ आए नहीं धर्म परिवर्तन धर्म परिवर्तन हुआ अपमानित किया गया दो एम दर्जे के नागरिक के नाते इनको रखा गया कहाँ जाएंगे लोग It's about giving citizenship who came, who fled the neighborhood post-partition and they continue to flee because of persecution. They are persecuted minorities and they have nowhere else to go but come to Bharat. It is about giving them citizenship. They were here in Bharat on or before the 31st of December 2014. What's the problem? Here's what he had to say about some of the opposition leaders and the voices and what they have been saying. This includes Mamata Banerjee and Arvind Kejriwal. ममता जी को शरणार्थी और घुसपिठिए दो शब्द के बीच का अंतर ही मालूम नहीं है दिल्ली के मुख्यमंत्री अपने भ्रष्टाचार के उजागर होने से अपना आपा खो बैठे हैं 2014 तक जो आ गए इनको नागरिकता देनी है और इतनी ही चिंता है तो वो क्यों बांग्लादेशी घुसपिठियों की बात नहीं करते हैं रोहिंग्यास का विरोध क्यों नहीं करते हैं इस विषय पर राहुल जी से एक बार चर्चा करके डिटेल पूछ लो कमरे में बैठकर आपको इंटरव्यू करे सी ए पर और समझाए जो वो बोल रहे हैं वो इतना समझा दे जनता को सो वीव गॉट स्मिता प्रकाश ऑफ ए एन आई विद अस Nalin Mehta with us in the studio. We should have our guests joining us very, very soon. Dr. Anand Ranganathan should be with us. Priyanka Tibberwal, Professor Manojit Mandal, Swapan Das Gupta. Everybody will be joining us. But let's ask the person who conducted the interview. Did he convince you, Smita Prakash? Um, convince me, I guess, as a journal, I'm always skeptical, uh, not too sure uh, about what a politician says. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I did feel that even the last time that uh, there were these... Uh, uh, there was a lot of misinformation. There was, uh, and the the messaging was not on time as far as uh, the BJP is concerned. Uh, so as a result of that, we saw these street protests happening, 
whether it was deliberately fueled by political parties, what it uh, achieved. But this time, it seems like uh, the BJP is on the front foot. They don't want this disinformation about CAA to uh, go forward. So I think uh, he was pretty convincing in uh, what he said. So I tried to pin him down uh, whether, you know, on what all the allegations are from Mamta Banerjee, from Arvind Kejriwal, from Rahul Gandhi, from Ovesi, all of them. And he had a reply to all of them. He didn't. He didn't fudge his answers. That's he didn't fudge point. his answers. Zaka Jacob on the magic wall, is that going to impact Bengal is the question. In the next 10 minutes, actually 11 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, we'll put out the Bengal numbers here on the News 18 Mega Opinion poll. Raul Shiv Shankar, Nalin Mehta with us, but Priyanka Tiparwal and Professor Manojit Mandal also with us. Namaste and Jai Hind. Professor Manojit Namaste. Mandal, what's the problem with giving citizenship to people who are here in Bharat already? And that too, almost 10 years ago, if not more. Uh, what is the procedure? Uh, what is the procedure, Mr. Uh, Anand Narsiman? The procedure is to, you treat them first as Indian or refugee or persecuted, and then you give them citizenship. I think you have read the procedure laid down in these rules. And, and this, is, this is something that nobody can accept. The people of Assam, hmm. 12 lakhs Hindus, how are you going to convince them about the fact that they are not Indian first? Uh, whereas most of them were Indian. I'm talking about the people who are now, now termed as D voter. Forget about any other state. I would ask you and your team to go to Assam and convince the people who are languishing in the detention camps or termed as D voters, 12 lakh Hindus, forget about the other. Hmm. Hindus, convince them that prove that you are persecuted. You came prior to 1971. Many of them might have lost their documents. And now they, they need to prove themselves as persecuted. Bangladeshi, once again, they will lose their other card. They lose their voter identity card. They lose their Russian card. And then they would say that they are Bangladeshi citizens to apply for Indian citizenship. I am challenging this government to you to go to Assam and convince these 12 lakh Hindus that Please apply for Indian citizenship through this law. Hmm. If this happens, I will withdraw my words. Well, the, Professor, Mandol, Professor yeah. Mandol, you know, forget about CAA, whether it happens, not happens. You know, we conducted this poll and we're going to reveal the Bengal numbers in about five, seven minutes from now. This poll no, was conducted. Well, once again, once again, again, hear me out, hear me out. This poll was conducted. This poll was conducted before the notification of CAA. And the numbers, when we reveal it in about seven or eight minutes from now, will absolutely befuddle you because this is something that is going to make you sit up and take notice without the CAA. Like I said, this whole survey happened in January and February when there was no question of notification of CAA. Without the notification of CAA, the numbers in itself will be so staggering that you will have to, you know, you'll have to find some explanation for it. But anyway, we'll do another survey in March and April and figure out the, the other aspect is Let Priyanka Tiparwal, Manojit Mandal is saying 17 lakh Hindus in, the, in, in detention camps, etc. The BJP largely is saying it's about 30,000 people on or before 31, 31st of December 2014. Where is this whole conversation happening from? Priyanka Tiparwal, please answer. Manojit Mandal. Listen, what, whatever Mr. Mandal is saying, you know, everything is in the air. Whatever he is saying, nothing will turn out to be true. Then what is the truth? <laughs> why is there? Why is there? Why is there so much of apprehension with CAA 2019? If there is ma if there is not, not not a big deal about it at all. Not at all. Now it is very clear on the ground. People are happy. People are celebrating in West Bengal. See, look at the people from Bandao. Look at the people from various parts of the uh, Matua Samaj from various parts in Bengal. We are all celebrating. They are dancing to the tune. We are enjoying because after so many years. That what was promised to them has come out to be true. And once again, this Modi ki guarantee. Thi. Whatever Modi says, Modi does. Unlike uh, the other uh, Congress mm. or the other governments which have been here. And also TNC. See, whatever TNC has said. Nee, PM Modi ki guarantee to 2020 mein parliament dwara ratify ho gai thi. So, so why March 2024? Nalin Mehta and uh, Rahul Shiv Shankar. Why wait till March 2024? If it is only about 30,000 people and 
how much of a poll impact will it make then why wait for such a long so time the significant part of this has to do with politics i mean fundamentally the ca is also a political move there is an ideological positioning behind it which is at the core of of the bjp's positioning to its core audiences mm. the ca when it when it when it you remember the debate around the ca that happened there was also an issue in assam Uh, at that point there was an issue about the about the census and all of that so now what what the what the bjp is going into the election saying is we had core promises we have we there was a ram temple we have given you a ram temple there was a, a thing uh, there was a whole thing of 370 we have we have removed 370 uniform civil code was one of our other promises there is already uh, uh, with triple talaq being removed some part of it happened other states are now doing a uniform civil code of some kind of of, a, of some kind of the other ca was another thing which which which, which was being talked about and now we have delivered that so explain but, but, but this Raul, to, sorry huh. the the yeah. whole the the fundamental opposition to caa is that it's citizenship by religion how do you counter that well there are two or three issues uh number one we are not talking about indian citizens we are talking about people who live abroad article 19 and this has been established by several supreme court orders in the past only and expressly applies to indian citizens indian citizens have the right to move freely and settle anywhere in the country we are talking about a group of foreigners who we are bringing in now i have some problems with uh, the ca as i have written uh, in my book also but the fundamental point here is that all rights are subject to certain reasonable limitations yes uh this whole business of saying and the three real oppositions to it that oh you know why this cut off date 2014 december 31st so if someone comes into the country on the 30th of december he's okay but if someone comes in the first at, of jan exactly he's he's he doesn't apply for this so this is a rather bizarre proposition but so there so is that with driving you could be uh, 17 years 362 days but you won't get a driving license would you so there are reasonable restrictions that are applied but the fundamental point is it is a political move there is no doubt about this uh, zakat the, the only no, no, the, the, the point only is will it stand is, the test that's of law right. so here is that's a quibble the here is a quibble you can't have a situation where you, you 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 might create a reasonable classification they have been upheld and you know i was reading a statement the united states saying we are expressing concern yes. they have two laws on their books which create the same reasonable classification with respect to iran where jews and christians are persecuted and it applies only to those two i feel if anything there should be no cut off at all at all if you are wanting to protect people who are trapped there facing all sorts of hideous uh you know uh, uh, uh tortures and persecution the, the biggest point uh, here I is i don't understand this december 31st 2014 cut off no so number his, two his his ha yeah okay please uh, the, the, the last point number two what is the supreme court been doing for two and a half years it's a fundamental <laughs> question that you need to ask this particular hearing on this the next hearing was supposed to happen two and a half years ago hmm why didn't the next hearing take no no but on that no no, 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 no one second so, on the, oh, oh, one second one second on that you can to be fair to the court you can say that a law is actuated after the rules are notified the rules were notified not notified correct, but you can, you can make the same correct. argument against the central government the, what were they doing for four years, four years. But, correct but they didn't was, do anything no no one second but why would then the court go into this issue at all frame the frame the issues have arguments no, no, be, etc because because a petition was moved before the court anyway yeah. nalan yeah one of the whole debate on ca so ca does not apply to indian muslims it applies to yes. to those who are coming from the outside and the state of and the indian state is making a distinction between yes it is making a distinction between hindus who are coming in and those from other nationalities but but that's the right of the indian state it no, does no, not no, affect see, indian see, muslims who are we, in we are india. missing one big point gentlemen and the lady and i hope i'm coming going to come back to smita prakash on this this is a residue of partition yeah the residue of partition impacted four countries today as of partition impacted four countries as on today pakistan afghanistan bharat and bangladesh why because the persecuted hindus or persecuted non muslims from part from pakistan fled either came towards bharat moved to jammu punjab and this region or those who are on the far eastern side they actually they uh, the western side they fled to afghanistan 
the Sikhs largely fled to Afghanistan and that's why Afghanistan has been added and this residue is on for more than seven and a half decades now here in eastern Pakistan that was split into Bangladesh and you know uh, it became Bangladesh we know the number of riots and the amount of persecution that's happened so where do these people go point is seven and a half decades down the line to put a capping of 31st December 2014 how is that fair secondly Please, did you ask him this? Is it being read in conjunction with NRC? Uh, NRC, he says, is not on the table right now. CCAA, the way it is, minus NRC, that is not up for discussion right now. As far as the CA is concerned, whether it is fair or not, the point is <clears throat> that even a Muslim can apply. It's not as if Muslims are excluded. This is just fast tracking of those who had been persecuted because of religious issues. I did ask him about Shias, Baloch uh, and, Ahmadiyya. uh, and the Ahmadiyas who are persecuted in, um, uh, in uh, Pakistan. What about them? The point is that what he says is, uh, and that is the BJP's point of view, that if they are persecuted, then admit it. Firstly, it's not documented enough that they have faced persecution. But if they say that they were persecuted, they can apply again. They can apply for asylum out here. There are various categories. This is just to expedite it. It's not as if, and believe yeah. me, 2014 date, the whole thing, they have been living here. There are many of them who are who are into politics, who are in very important positions of power. When I got to know about the names, I was befuddled that nobody has actually reported on this, that they have been occupying, they have their ration card, they have their voter ID card, they have everything. So what are we talking about? So we are talking about the fact that whether this aspect is going to impact the Bengal elections, even as Swapandas Gupta ji joins us here into the studios, ladies and gentlemen, as Zakar Jacob said, this... Survey, the News 18 mega opinion poll was conducted before the CAA rule notifications happened. Bengal, let's look at the seat projections and then we'll go to Swapan Das Gupta and say, ask him that Swapanji, if this is the projection, seat share projection before CAA rule notification, what is going to happen now? Ladies and gentlemen, 42 seats in Bengal, it's up to 25 seats for the BJP. Trinamool Congress slips from 17 to 22. The BJP jumps from 18 to 25. From 22 to 17 and 18 to 25. That's the up and the down between the Trinamool Congress and the BJP. Big, big jump there. Nothing for the left, nothing for the Congress party. It is between the Trinamool and the BJP. It's a straight fight. Similar vote share, 42% each. Congress Plus or the India Alliance gets 14%. The others are at 2%. It's a sweep in big, big, big terms for the BJP. If they are going to jump up, they're going to jump up seven seats from last time around to 25 seats. And uh, the Trinamool Congress slipping from 22 last time to just about 17. Swapan Dasji, how do you see these numbers? Welcome to the CNN News 18 studios. Good to have you with us here. Thank you. Uh I think they're very much in line with the national trends. You know, Bengal has always been a little different in only. It's been a bit contrarian in a lot of ways. I think in, the la in 2019, we saw the trends in Bengal more or less converge somewhat with the national trends. And I think that trend is again now manifesting itself. Whether the CAA is going to have a tremendous impact on this, I don't know. What the CAA will do hmm. is it will consolidate a lot of the minority votes behind the Trinamool Congress. Hmm. Whether the BJP succeeds in getting a, a corresponding degree of Hindu consolidation, if that happens, then I think 25 might go up to 27, 28. 27, 28. It could, no. it go, it could go up, but yeah. that's an hypothetical situation. You know, and it, we're talking about the CA effect. Yeah, if this happens, the fact that the BJP has more number of seats <clears throat> in the Lok Sabha than the TMC, this would be a seminal moment in Bengal politics. This would be comparable to what happened back in 2011. There was a change of regime, as it were, in 2011. This would signify a change, not necessarily a change of regime, but a seminal moment nonetheless. I want to bring our viewers yeah, up yeah, to speed. One thing, yeah. Yeah, just one thing, if this indeed happens, yes. it will be the first time since about 1967 
or 1971, mm. that a national party becomes the leading party Correct. of Bengal in parliament. In and parliament. that's a huge Correct. change. 444 out of 543 seats that have been declared before Zaka Jacob works his magic on the magic wall. Just reminding, 99 seats to be projected left. 327 for the NDA. Is it better than the last time around? Gentlemen, if my memory serves me right, they are close to what they did in 2019 as the NDA. 327, 90 for the INDI Alliance, 27 others, 444 out of 543. Bengal, 25 seats. How is that possible? We, we have how many more states to reveal? We have two more states to reveal. Yes. So that's Maharashtra and Gujarat. Gujarat. That's about 60 odd seats. Okay. Let's, let's get to Bengal. The region wise breakup. This is fascinating for me because. You know, the southwestern part of Bengal. And look at these numbers. This is where the maximum gains are happening for the BJP. The southwestern part, which is Bankura, Purulia, Jungle Mahal. These are places where the BJP did very well back in 2019. They did lose out just a tad bit in 2021, the assembly election. But it seems like they are racing away in this part of Bengal. They're also doing very well in the northern part, which is Kuch Bihar, Alipur Dwar, which again, I think they had five MPs from the northern belt of Bengal, again doing very well. The Trinamool, only one MP from North Bengal, whereas the BJP getting seven. In the Kolkata and Greater Kolkata region, the BJP gets none, the TMC gets all five. And in southeast, which is north and uh, south 24 Parganas, it's the TMC which still manages to have an edge, but the sweepstakes are evened out a bit. It's five to the BJP and seven uh, to the uh, to the Trinamool Congress. But really, where the game has completely changed in favour of the BJP, and I want Rahul Shashankar to weigh in on this, is in the tribal belt, Jungle Mahal, Bankura, Purulia, in the southwestern part of the state, bordering Bihar, many of those districts. Do you see this happening, Rahul Shashankar? Because if it does, and I say this again, if this happens, if it is BJP 25 and Trinamool Congress 17, then I shudder to think what the Assembly of 2026, the West Bengal Assembly elections of 2026 might portend. Why would you shudder? <laughs> <laughs> it's not as if the heavens would have come down. But uh, nonetheless, l let me just uh, come in here. There are four states that we've called before this one. Mm -hmm. Three of them were tribal dominated states. Urissa, which is of course on the one side of Bengal, then you have Chhattisgarh and Jharkhand. Yeah. And then you have parts of Andhra and Telangana, of course. So there is a consistent pattern. The tribal vote is moving towards the BJP. Our poll is establishing this. Now, by how much and all of that, one can't say. But there is a definite swing. Mm. And therefore, the BJP is registering a presence in some of these states. Number two, very importantly, look at data. There were 21 seats where victory margin was less than the third position candidate votes. Now, what was, why was this? Because the TMC had 43% of the vote. The BJP had 40% of the vote. In Southwest, it lost six of these seats by between 3%, zero and 3%. Maybe, I don't know, those seats have come back. One of those seats, uh, and in the overall number, out of 21, 11 of 21, the TMC led by the slimmest of margins. Eight out of 21, the BJP led by the slimmest of margins. So there can be flux. It's difficult to call this one. There's an equal vote share. Uh, but the growth is happening on the BJP side of the fence. Yeah. The 42, 43%, in fact, I think the TMC has lost a percent if it's at 42. Yes. And the BJP has picked up 2%. Yeah, and that it's, picked tells up, you that it's, it's picked up from the left and it's picked up from some of the others. Professor let Dinesh Vashne is with us. Let's Dienka talk about... is with us. Yeah. I'm just going to come back to sure. Zaka Jacob, uh, as I say, and Manojit Mandal is also with us. Some poor bandwidth with Manojit Mandal. We'll try and sort that out and make up for it. Let's look at 2019. Yes, Zaka. The vote share... The BJP's vote share has gone up by 2% from 40% to 42% and the TMC's has slipped by about 1.2% from 43.2% down to 42 But I think, you know, what is fascinating for me, Anand, Rahul, Chopin, is, look, this is the southwestern part of Bengal. The BJP had maximised uh, in these seats last time around. What our poll is suggesting is that they'll, they'll get more in the southwestern part. Here in the southeastern part, which is south and uh, north 24 Parganas, you have uh, districts like uh, Nadia, Malda, all of that, all the way up till here, this is where the TMC dominated in the last election. This poll is suggesting that the TMC's dominance in the southeastern part and also in the central eastern part of Bengal 
will reduce if it turns out that the BJP gets 25 and the TMC gets 17. Of course, the BJP had a big presence in the north of Bengal as well last time around. Yeah. That seems to be the case this time around as well. For me, the fascinating thing is that again, I reiterate, this poll happened before the CAA. These are the parts that border Bangladesh. These are the parts where the TMC has done exceptionally well, not just in the Lok Sabha of 2019, but more in the Assembly of 2021. If we have a poll, Smita. Uh, yeah. Mamta Banerjee has sustained a quote major injury, says TMC. There's oh, okay. there's a picture that they have posted on Twitter. Okay. Uh, ha she seems to have a head injury. If huh. you want to show the picture, okay. uh, yeah. she seems to have had a head injury and mm. she's bleeding in the head. And there's some uh, stitch marks on her head. Uh, it's their word is that she's had, and it looks pretty bad. The picture. I don't know whether you can How unfortunate. Uh, zoom, zoom. Yeah, in. it's an it's yeah, an unfortunate turn of events. Yeah. Uh, she yeah. is at the SSKM hospital, and she has had some injury there, right at the center. It's on her forehead. Uh, we are just trying to ensure that the visuals can be a little disturbing as we put it right away. So we'll just put it uh, and, and treat it a bit, and then put it out. But that's the update that's just come. Uh, Professor Dinesh Varshne, Priyanka Tipperwal with us, and we also have uh, Manojit Mondal. Now, this is an instance we'll try and connect with Kamalika to try and understand what has happened uh, because uh, they've showed that she has sustained injury and uh, it's the it's the Trinamool Congress AITMC official handle that has tweeted and said, our chairperson, Mamata official, sustained a major injury. Please keep her in your prayers. So, this is what uh, is, is the update. We've got the pictures. We'd like not put it out on air right now. We just treat it a bit and then, then put it out. Now, that's an unfortunate turn of events. But uh, we'll go back to Kamalika and get an update as to what happened, where it happened uh, in just a bit. Right now, staying back and uh, keeping the focus on the News 18 mega opinion poll at this point, Professor Dinesh Varshney, the left is nowhere in sight. It's a two-way fight between the BJP and the Trinamool right now. Professor Vashni, can you hear me? We should go to the break. Well, I don't think Professor Dinesh Vashni can hear. Priyanka Tibberwal, will you take 25 seats or do you expect more? You're on mute, Priyanka ji. You're on mute. Can you hear me? Yes, Am I yes, audible yes, now? Yes, go ahead, please. Yes. So my uh, prayers for Mamata Banerjee and uh, secondly, as I said, that ye dil mange more. And you see this uh, number which you've shown here as 25, this will go till 28 or 29. Now, I do not agree to uh, one more uh, thing which you have said that we are getting no seats in Kolkata. By the time you were showing this, I received at least 20 messages from people of Kolkata, which is the Kolkata city. And they are saying that though we are going to win the North Kolkata seat that, at this time. And it won't be a big surprise. I'm telling you, please watch it out here that North Kolkata seat will be won by the uh, BJP this time. Because right. the kind of corruption which was witnessed everywhere on the ground, you know, all the jails, all the courts are all located in the city. And it is the city who has witnessed everything. And moreover, right. Sandesh Khali will be a big factor. And overall, to add up, CAA will be commendable change which will, which will be witnessed on the ground. Right. We'll come back to this in just a bit. Just trying to see if we can connect with Kamalika to try and understand uh, what's happened with Mamata Di. Uh, Mamata Banerjee, the Chief Minister of Bengal, the All India Trinamool Congress, just putting out a tweet saying that she is in SSKM hospital. She's been admitted to the hospital. She yeah. is injured. Uh, she injured. has had a head injury. The images show that she has got an injury to her forehead and there is a certain level of bleeding and she had the pictures show that she is uh, in the hospital bed, ladies and gentlemen. We'll try and connect with Kamalika to try and get an understanding as to what has happened. She is uh, the Chief Minister of Bengal, Mamata Banerjee. We do not know where and how she's got the injury. But right now, we are given to understand that she has sustained a major injury and she is in hospital. She is at the SSKM hospital. We'll try and uh, see if we have Kamalika through with her. No, we what don't happened? have... Kamalika is through with us on the phone. Yes, Kamalika, what happened? Where did it happen? See, what we are getting it from our sources and the party Twitter handle has already tweeted that she got injured. Now, how this injury took place is still not clear. But right now, she is in SSKM Hospital of Kolkata, which is the government hospital, and there is a team of doctors which is looking after her. This is clearly a cut injury which seems to have happened from top in, in the entire space. 
so she whether she fell down or what led to this injury that still is not clear but uh, definitely it's a very grievous injury that's what we are getting it from the hospital sources till now that's not clear that how she got the injury but the photo that has come up from the uh, the, the from the trinamool congress and from the hospital sources we are coming to know that this cut is a very deep cut which has taken place but how this injury has taken place that's still not clear right we will try and uh, we just pray and uh, hope that uh, it's not very serious and she is back up on her uh, feet and uh, up and about soon it does look like a deep cut there right at the center of the forehead and there is a, a certain significant amount of bleeding even as she is at the hospital bed it looks like this is just before she has been treated and she has been attended to at the sskm hospital uh, where she is currently uh, there will be the best team of doctors that will be attending to her uh, we must remember this is not the first time that she has had an injury when on the campaign trail even ahead of the vidhan sabha elections the bengal polls she had gotten injured on her foot and it is the same hospital that she was brought to and thereafter she campaigned right through on a wheelchair here right now she is in the hospital we will try and go back and get more details from kamalika as and when we get some clarity trinamool congress just uh, putting out this picture let's go back to priyanka tiberwal professor manojit mandal and back to the news 18 mega opinion poll which is putting out the numbers of bengal and ladies and gentlemen the big call on bengal is that it is the bjp that is taking bengal way ahead of the trinamool congress 25 to 17 professor manojit mandal your response 42% vote share each is what the news 18 mega opinion poll is predicting and this was done before the caa rule notification the first of all my my sincere prayer for mamta di i mean may she get well very soon uh, the country needs her very badly at this point in time everyone knows that not just bengal Uh, coming back to your poll, I have got full respect for the poll, and reminds me badly hmm. of uh, what happened uh, just uh, three years back. Exactly same kind of predictions were being done, and somewhat Mr. Amit Shah said, "Aapki baar do so far," and we ultimately knew the result. Even during the exit polls, I think most of the pollsters actually hmm. uh, wrote TMs off, and you saw the result. Both in 2021, similar mm -hmm. things are going to happen. I was really surprised to know, and uh, mm -hmm. I will I'll sort of forgive me for saying this. Uh, these opinion polls are the, most of the areas that you are showing from Jungle Mahal. I come from this region because my native village is still very much there in Jungle mm -hmm. Mahal. Chargram MP he has resigned few mm -hmm. days back. Mm -hmm. Bakura MP who is a minister of state. He was being grounded day in and day after by the BJP people. Hmm. Vishnu Puri and Tishomitra Khan. His uh, former wife is fighting against him, saying that this person is not even seen in Vishnu Puri for uh, for the last five years. Purule MP not seen in in, in Purule for the last five years. Hmm. I mean, I, I, again, I repeat, I've got full respect for the opinion poll. But hmm. have you taken the real opinion of the people, or well. you have you know mixture imagination? I was taken much uh, professor mondel i would just like to say you are entitled to your opinion and respectfully and perfectly sir true what we can say is 500 518 please hear me out 518 lok sabha constituencies across 21 states of the country covering nearly 95% of the 543 seats each lok sabha seat nearly 218 respondents per lok sabha seat and three vidhan sabha constituencies of each lok sabha seat have been covered each interview is a personal interview or computer aided personal interview and this has been done the overall sample size of this survey is 118000 plus if you would do the math you would understand that this is perhaps very very comprehensive in depth each of the interviews has also been geotagged to ensure that the interviews and the survey happens at the location that has been claimed in the vidhan sabha constituency of the lok sabha seat so that's the news 18 mega opinion poll done by news 18 poll hub you may agree so disagree with the way, words way. but the no, integrity no, no, no. of it the honesty of it of the purpose and the so effort I'm, well that's I'm, where I'm something where we would like to I'm differ with you and then he'll see the surprise from 2 to 18 and now from 18 to 28 and hang on please please let me speak are you why are you have already won the elections why do something like that let me speak <laughs> thank you 
मनोजीत मंडल एंड ऑल्सो प्रियंका टेबरवाल कमिंग बैक इन टू द स्टूडियो डॉक्टर आनंद रंगनाथन एज ऑल्सो मेड इज वे अलॉन्ग विद स्वपन दास गुप्ता एंड स्मिता प्रकाश एंड नलिन मेहता एवरीबडी इज बिजी मेकिंग नोट्स ट्राइंग टू लुक एट द प्रोजेक्शन एंड एट बिजी इन देर ओन इंडिविजुअल हडल डॉक्टर रंगनाथन वाई इज योर पैड एम टी द इलेक्ट्रोरल बॉन्ड लिस्ट इज ऑल्सो आउट सो वाई यूर डूइंग दिस इलेक्शन एनालिसिस दिस सच अ न्यूज फॉल विच इज है so uh, the what i can i mean obviously one doesn't know the names as yet because there are all these company names but the first thing i was looking was that i can't see an adani and ambani that. <laughs> so that's going to make a lot of trouble <laughs> with people who are saying kahan pe hai kahan pe hai you know adani ambani kahan hai i can't see in the list so far but of course there might be company names uh, all right. you know which could be that back on bengal yes dr ranganathan I think uh, pun not intended. This sends a message or sandesh, if I may say so. <laughs> uh, this was before the the CAA, yeah. uh, but this was after the Sandesh Khali horror, hmm. if I am not yes. mistaken. So it's absolutely clear, and uh, it's not just the Sandesh Khali fiasco that TMC has had to face. Not just the fact that for 55 days, hmm. the tormentor of dozens of women, alleged gang rapist, was on the run. not just the fact that the kolkata high court severely blasted the uh, hmm. the local state government there of the and the police being in cahoots all these things have had an effect and the fact of the message uh, the fact of the matter is that 25 is um, i think 8 or 7 more than what hmm. the bjp yeah. managed la- last time uh, 18 they had last time uh, 18 yeah, yeah. so swapanda yeah. would be more. absolutely elated with the uh, with the result but mm-hmm. is this sandesh kali uh, swapanda gupta is this the impact of sandesh kali because there are there is a view that it's a, uh, some people say you know it's a it's one island it's off you know uh, out at sea and who really cares no, about no it no doubt you are right about the geographical aloofness of sandesh yes. kali but i think it would be interesting if you have the data to see if the a uh, gender ratio if there has been a swing of women women voters against True. the trinamool congress after shabdesh kali and if you compare it to 2019 if you got the data that would really be the answer to your question mm. however i would draw one caveat on this question of the being elated on the 25 is that in bengal elections are a little different from everywhere else in the country in so mm. far as in the rest of the country people vote in bengal the vote is managed mm. Mm. and i think that how much of it you know i don't want to cast aspersions on the integrity of Process, the elections yeah. but this is a reality we've got to face up to and whether that will have a 2 to 3% impact is something which we need but, to but be Nalit, careful you about. know some of viewers w- might be interested in the fact that why is it that the bjp and the tmc are at exactly the same vote share Hmm. but the bjp gets what seven eight seats more than the tmc so that, that's not particularly uh, uh, surprising because the, because of the way the vote is concentrated for the bjp in certain areas and if you look at your map even last time the bjp had a significant number of seats but it was largely in the in the south southwest little bit in the east and, and in the north, the north yeah. um, and to uh, to add to the point that rahul was making earlier in this program on the tribal vote for the bjp uh, i do want to make a larger point that nationally last time the bjp had a 70% strike rate in tribal seats it won 31 out of the uh, 47 odd reserved seats <coughs> yeah. this your poll is showing that that trend has got strengthened this time okay. including in bengal okay you know uh, interesting that you point out uh, have you noticed that rahul gandhi goes on talking about vanwasi adivasi because i think uh, what has happened is in these elections the state elections also you know traditionally everybody used to believe that the tribal vote falls into the kitty of the congress, congress uh, as 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 it always used to so but these state elections showed up that that's not the case so you saw in 2019 a wave moving away from the congress for the tribal vote and now again when these elections are coming you're seeing this in bengal also so i think this whole vanwasi adivasi debate one and the second one just quickly uh, i wanted to say is that when you talked about shandesh khali i think you can see that when the tmc is going on talking about the women vote because the women vote is essential for mm. mamta banerji if that is going 
to be moving away from TMC towards uh, the BJP. That just clearly shows that what the BJP had always said that this is not about an outsider yeah. vote. We are not outsiders, and the uh, the TMC always well, said that, that these are the crumbled. that these After are the outsiders. Yeah, yes. yes. Baharka. So yes. you know that so, that whole thing will crumble. That that narrative will crumble. Just some data here on the women vote. TMC now obviously anticipating perhaps something uh, raise the Lakshmir Bhandar cash benefit scheme from 500 to 1000 for general women and 1200 for SCST women. This has just happened. Uh, but just looking at the voting patterns, 2019, 17 out of 42 Lok Sabha seats, women recorded a higher turnout than men. In these seats, the TMC emerged victorious in eight, BJP in seven, the Congress in two. In several of these seats, the difference in turnout between men and women was more than 5%. In Malda North, this gap was as high as 7.79%. So it is a significant vote that is having a determining effect in certain seats. And I'm going purely by the data. Perhaps we can pull out no, if so you can. I, I want to focus on two also factors. Also managing so, the voting, yeah. which Shopanda said. I, because I think this time, uh, the, the, the election commission is going to have an excessive amount, excessive is what uh, the other parties will say, but a significant amount of police presence, central forces present out there to see this managing of votes, which has been a tradition. But it's not what happens during polling. It's what's been happening after Even the election. Even on polling no, no, no. day. When there's on polling day. No, no, this course. managing of getting so, voters and so, not getting so, 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 the booth. Which is why we are, more central since we are on uh, the M factor, managing <laughs> elections, uh, we talked about Matuas, Mahila, can I just bring in the Muslim factor, right? Yes. Because okay. let, let's, be, let's be very clear about this. Mamta Banerjee, one of the three-pronged sort of vote banks of hers, uh, one of them happens to be the Muslims. And the Muslims are a significant, particularly in those districts that border Bangladesh. I just want to bring where the Muslims are more than 20%. And here again, you can have two counter currents, right? You can have one the Muslim consolidation in favor of the Trinamool Congress. You could also have, in the aftermath of the CAA, a Matua and a Hindu consolidation. Yeah, so I whether think. it is in you know South and North 24 Parganas, whether you go further north to Nadia uh, uh, and other districts in the central part of the state, the, the key for the BJP is, if because of CAA and because of this perception that Mamta Banerjee is dependent so much on the Muslim vote, particularly in the districts that border Bangladesh, if there is a reverse Hindu consolidation, then this sea of green that you see, and look at the difference in vote share in the last election, even though the number of seats was 22 to TMC and 18 to the BJP, the vote share difference was almost 10% in these seats, not so much in the rest of Bengal, but in these seats, it was a 10% vote gap between the TMC and the BJP. The BJP, as per the News 18 poll, opinion poll for 2024, will and must narrow this gap because otherwise you're not going to see a situation where the BJP has 25 and the TMC has 17. All right. Well, we got lots, lots, lots of inputs, no, lots of vote, news, lots of conversations. Right. But the fact is, ladies and gentlemen, Bengal, if it turns out as the News 18 mega opinion poll, then that means, as Swapandas Gupta said, that perhaps is indicative of the entire trend nationally. As we take a break, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have too many seats to speak about. 518 is the number that the News 18 mega opinion poll has done. 25 more seats. We will extrapolate based on the trends. 327 to the NDA, halfway mark is 272, 90 to the INDIA, 444 out of 543, 99 more seats to project. And to tell you, two big states to go. Stay with us right here on CNN News 18 on the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll. From 88, they went to a huge number uh, of, uh, you know, uh, 224. And that means, as you can see, 88 more than 2014. It didn't get them any more seats. The vote share increased in seats where it's already quite strong. Correct. It needs to jump up in seats where it is not strong See, to make that conversion one true. three. Overall, overall what, three. We are, what we are looking at is, and I think somewhere the Prime Minister has shifted the dynamic. He has said 370 and 400 par. 
technically in our minds ladies and gentlemen we need to remember it's 272 par you are, you par, if the nda crosses 272 they are back in government and if they go 300 then they are comfortable now 303 is the last time around 325 330 plus overall for the nda that's why the prime minister has shifted the goal post but basis on this opinion poll shivani gupta is there on the wall with us but but the point is had they not done what they've done to the shift sena not won back the jdu it could have been a very tight very tight contest see even now it very is about retention yeah. it, you have to also gain you have to yes. make more to 303 to 373 it needs to break out to get 67 more seats for seats yeah to 60. get more than you know 30 40% of 242 the vote share 242 ka to report card nikal gaya 301 exactly. ka nikalne wala yes shivani no yes. you talked very rightly about how the bjp led by the prime minister have themselves extended their expectations to that 400 par mark and that's going to be historic uh, and you talked about where do they gain now hmm. yesterday as rahul very rightly mentioned what was the headline of our opinion poll the mega news 18 opinion poll two seats in kerala five seats in tamil nadu now a lot of people are debating this still this evening and today we are going to actually talk about the other big southern states as well we've got andhra hmm. telangana karnataka results coming up in just a bit and these are states a lot has happened Karnataka went back to Congress. Telangana has gone to Congress. You've got Andhra, where the BJP and the TDP for the first time since 2018 are coming back together. True. So a lot to watch out for. Correct. But if you were to look at that belt, interestingly, let's keep Karnataka out. If you were to look Andhra, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, that's about a hundred seats, ladies and gentlemen, and it's less than ten seats for the BJP there. The NDA has not done well. Now ADMK is also not part of that grouping, so it's not going to be easy. They mm. have to, and the part is they have to get 67 more seats than the last time around. BJP itself, is it getting it or not? Let's let's look at where it is standing right now. 242 seats. the race to 272 because that's the halfway mark so for us first that uske baad jo target set kiya wo if they meet it or not so where is the bjp right now or the nda right now at 174 they need to get another 98 seats out of 301 remaining today 98 seats to get to this 272 halfway mark that secures them as per the news 18 mega opinion poll a third term and i i india alliance is at 61 will they get up close to about 200 Will they become a stronger opposition than they were in 2019? 2024 will we see perhaps a little more opposition and heft for the opposition as far as the parliamentary constituencies and at the centre in Parliament is concerned. We'll have to wait and watch. Let's try and get this, break this down before we get comments from our uh, guests here. We already have the numbers for the next most important state, the only bastion. in the south where the bjp often has ruled the roost irrespective of who's in power at the state they have returned big big gains at the center the state of karnataka the first of the states the 12 states we're going to cover in this part 2 of the news 18 mega opinion poll the state of karnataka 28 seats 25 to the end Back on, ladies and gentlemen, on the News 18 Mega Opinion poll, two more states to go: Gujarat and Maharashtra. Out of the states that have been polled, and on the News 18 Mega Opinion poll, let's look at the numbers: 327 already. The states of Gujarat, the state of Gujarat, 26 seats that Gujarat will return to the centre in the Lok Sabha elections. All of them, all of them going to the BJP. Is there a surprise there? after that landmark historic victory in the vidhan sabha and that too the prime minister and the home ministers home state of gujarat gujarat will set the tone for their vada pradhan 56% vote share indi alliance a 36% vote share the others at 8% ladies and gentlemen these 26 seats take the nda past the 350 number So, sare 300 par has happened. 350 par with 48 more seats to go has happened for the NDA. But what does that account for the BJP? 
Is the BJP gaining? Is it going to do better than 302? Is it in position there? Let's try and understand this, ladies and gentlemen. Himachal, zero. Punjab, plus one. Haryana, Delhi, zero. Uttarakhand, zero. Gains. Uttar Pradesh, the gains from last time around, from 2019. For the BJP is 13 seats. Well, I beg your pardon, for the NDA. Bihar, it's losing one seat. Assam, it's gaining one seat. West Bengal, it's gaining seven seats. Jharkhand, it's the same as the last time around. So where are the gains overall happening for the NDA? Plus one in Chhattisgarh, plus five in Odisha, plus four in Telangana. It's the same story as far as Madhya Pradesh is concerned. Let's move to the south. It's gaining 15 seats in Andhra Pradesh. It's down one in Karnataka. Up two in Kerala and up five, plus five. Opening its account in Tamil Nadu, plus five, ladies and gentlemen. So overall, the total gains are 54 seats for the NDA. 54 seats for the NDA. Rajasthan and Gujarat is the same as the last time around. 54 seats plus for the NDA so far. We have not accounted for the 48 seats of Maharashtra yet. 353. Total number of seats, 470 out of 543. You will say the math is not adding up. Why? Because 25 seats, we will extrapolate and we will put out the final number. We have polled on the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll 518 Lok Sabha constituencies. So 25 will be left. We will extrapolate based on the trends and we'll put out the final number out of 543. But for 470 seats so far, it is 353 for the NDA, runaway victory already. Zaka Jacob, are there any surprises? Sade so par for NDA, Char so par possible. You know, with, with all due apologies to my friends in Gujarat, there's really nothing to talk about. I mean, like, we got 26 out of 26 for the last two elections straight, and now presumably for the third election. What do you talk about? I mean, like, there's nothing to talk about. I'm sorry, Rahul, I, 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 I defer to you. <laughs> is there a correlation? I'm just asking a question because I don't have the information. Maybe people here might. Is there a correlation between prime ministers carrying their state election after election? Or there have been some prime ministers who became prime minister but lost their state. I mean, was it Indra Kumar Gujral, Gauda? Did he have I, a state? I don't remember Manmohan Singh carrying the state, so... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Neither Indra Even Kumar Gujral... became the president. Yeah, not Indra Kumar Gujral. Uh, well, I mean, not, what I meant was, did, no, the, did the state also... No, no, of, Charan Singh Muraji Desai, they were not, they were uh, they were not uh, associated with the state <clears throat> as such. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't think we and can look they at... they weren't on the ticket. But but yeah. Mr. Modi is definitely associated with Gujarat and uh, you know you saw in 2022 156 seats for the BJP, Congress 17 and Aam Aadmi Party opening their share uh, in the assembly with uh, five. Uh, but, but can you believe this result? Yeah, these, I mean I think are, uh, no, I the very prime much minister has gone into is no no I'm I'm not I'm I'm yeah. not being I am actually now. Throwing this question out there, it in is fact, a remarkable I be assertion. I would surprised if it becomes 60% instead of 56%. It's a remarkable assertion of the BJP's ability to have reached the public out there and built a perception that uh, it is the yeah, uh, yeah. A party that obviously has now pan-national presence. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, what does this do for the satraps? Look at the gains, they've all come at the expense mostly of regional parties. Even the DMK has been cut to size, if we go by our projections. Uh, this is an alteration of the way the center is also going to interlocute with states now, yeah. and regional parties. And, and thirdly, uh, just to put it out there, and we can discuss this maybe, the Rajya Sabha situation is going to dramatically alter after yeah. this. And that's going to have implications. The first 100 days post May 2024, the result day, will be very, very critical. The first 100 days post 2019 results were also very, very critical and landmark, ladies and gentlemen. So let's not forget that. But here's the question that I want to put to all of you. Here's the question that I want to put to all of you. 73 seats still to be declared, to be projected. 47 seats more to 400, char so par for the NDA. Hmm. My question to you, lady and the gentleman is, this is the third time they are seeking a mandate. And it's bigger than ever before. Dr. Rangarathan, what does it say? I think it's just Already remarkable. bigger than ever before. Huh? <clears throat> yeah, I think it's really remarkable to beat anti-incumbency once is tough. To beat it twice is remarkable. To beat it three times round 
is just, I, I would say, phenomenal. I was, in fact, uh, I, I've been speaking with people and saying, where was the need to say 400 par? Because A, it sometimes can reek of uh, overconfidence and B, it can instill some lethargy or inertia in the voters and say, well, jeet gaye, ab kya vote, ja, kya vote kare. So is it something that is going to boomerang? Hmm. Well, judging by the opinion poll. The entrenchment also of uh, conservatism, <laughs> right. conservative politics. Right. I, I don't know. I think <clears throat> the Prime Minister has also entered now a realm of very few global leaders who yeah. come back. I think in Britain, you probably had the maximum going back to Walpole. But you know, to uh, explain more than this, three terms. Yes. I mean, you've had, uh, you've had some British prime ministers who've come back three, three times. I think, uh, oh, uh, he was yeah. there for 20 years or so. But yeah. you know, not I, I, scale. Yeah. Yeah, not the if, scale. If I can yes. just explain this, just citing one example, because Tessie interrupted me yesterday. And he was, I fact-checked him, he was woefully wrong. But I, he's not here, so there's He no was woefully point. wrong today also. Hmm. Oh, was he? Yeah. But you know, um, how does one explain it? Um, to reiterate what I said uh, yesterday, Anand, hmm. Um, it's been 11 years since Obamacare was launched. 40 million Americans have got this Affordable Health Insurance Act. 40 million in 11 years. It's been six years since Modi Care or Ayushman was launched. The population of people with Ayushman is more than the population of America, 330 million people. More than the population of United Kingdom people, <coughs> Indians have been treated on Ayushman Bharat. I mean, these are staggering figures. So when you ask, why, how has this man beaten anti-incumbency twice over? It's on the basis of results. You know. Right, on the, on the basis of results. Yeah, yeah. quickly, I have to... No, no, yes. Uh, you know, uh, Anand says, uh, why did the Prime Minister have to say char so par? One, I think it is to energize the carders because there does come about a lethargy and, you know, that, okay, fine, Modi is going to win it for us. After two elections, to energize your carders to, to go for the election, you need a target and 400 par. The other thing is, when you say, when you put this huge target of 400, you're also giving a signal to possible allies. It could right. be a Naidu, it could be in uh, in uh, Orissa, it could be Patnaik, it could be anybody to say that, look, we are going way beyond just 272, we are going 400. Come join us, join us in this uh, See, plan. On the one hand, no, there is one really group which you. said so par, <laughs> the other one is saying char so par, uh, which is possible. Like I'm, uh, we're going to take a break. We're way over here on the broadcast. When we come back, that one big state of Maharashtra, 48 seats and the 25 seats extrapolated, 73 seats that we will account for, ladies and gentlemen. Can the NDA manage 47 out of those 73 seats? Because that means they will touch that number of 400. It's the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll. This is the scorecard right now. Stay right here with us here on the News 18 Network on CNN News 18. The Alliance game. Intriguingly, very interesting. This jump in vote share for the BJP, hmm. and I'm, I'm leaving it Back to you, in right. those 224 seats, did not yield many more than uh, obviously 2014. So while from 88, they went to a huge number uh, of, uh, you know, uh, 224. And that means, as you can see, 88 more than 2014. It didn't get them many more seats. The vote share increased in seats where it's already quite strong. Correct. It needs to jump up in seats where it is not strong See, to make that conversion one true. three. Overall, overall what, three. We are, what we are looking at is, and I think somewhere the Prime Minister has shifted the dynamic. He has said 370 and 400 par. Technically, in our minds, ladies and gentlemen, we need to remember it's 272 par. You are, you par if the NDA crosses 272, they are back in government. And if they go 300, then they are comfortable. Now, 303 is the last time around. 325, 330 plus overall for the NDA. That's why the Prime Minister has shifted the goalpost. But basis on this opinion poll, Shivani Gupta is there on the wall with us. But, but the point is, had they not done what they've done to the Shiv Sena, not won back the JDU, it could have been a very tight, very tight contest. See, even now, it very is about retention. Yeah. It, you have to also gain. You have to yes. make more. So, 300, 3 to 3, 370. So, it needs to break out get of those 67 more seats. seats. Yeah. To 60. get more than, you know, 30, 40% of the vote share 242 ka to report card nikal gaya. Exactly. 301 ka nikal ne hola. Yes, Shivani. No, yes. you talked very rightly about how the BJP, led by the Prime Minister, have themselves extended their expectations to that charso. Par mark, and that's going to be historic. 
uh, and you talked about where do they gain. Now, mm. yesterday, as Rahul very rightly mentioned, what was the headline of our opinion poll, the Mega News 18 opinion poll? Two seats in Kerala, five seats in Tamil Nadu. Now, a lot of people are debating this still this evening. And today, we're going to actually talk about the other big southern states as well. We've got Andhra, mm. Telangana, Karnataka results coming up in just a bit. And these are states a lot has happened. Karnataka went back to Congress, Telangana has gone to Congress. You've got Andhra where the BJP and the TDP for the first time since 2018 are coming back together. True. So a lot to watch out for. Correct. But if you were to look at that belt, interestingly, let's keep Karnataka out. If you were to look Andhra, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Kerala. That's about 100 seats, ladies and gentlemen. And it's less than 10 seats for the BJP there. The NDA has not done well. Now, ADMK is also not part of that grouping. So it's not going to be easy. They mm. have to, and the part is, they have to get 67 more seats than the last time around BJP itself. Is it getting it or not? Let's, let's look at where it is standing right now. 242 seats. The race to 272 because that's the halfway mark. So for us, first that, uske baad jo target set kiya wo, if they meet it or not. So where is the BJP right now or the NDA right now? At 174. They need to get another 98 seats out of 301 remaining today. 98 seats to get to this 272 halfway mark. That secures them as per the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll. A third term. And INDI Alliance is at 61. Will they get up close to about 200? Will they become a stronger opposition than they were in 2019? 2024 will we see perhaps a little more opposition and heft for the opposition as far as the parliamentary constituencies and at the centre in parliament is concerned. We'll have to wait and watch. Let's try and get this, break this down before we get comments from our uh, guests here. We already have the numbers for the next most important state, the only bastion in the south where the BJP often has ruled the roost. Irrespective of who's in power at the state, they have returned big, big gains at the centre. The state of Karnataka, the first of the states, the 12 states we're going to cover in this part 2 of the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll. The state of Karnataka, 28 seats, 25 to the... Back on the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll, not just the halfway race, it's going all the whole hog, ladies and gentlemen. NDA, Sade Team so par already, 353 par, still 73 seats to be announced, ladies and gentlemen, on the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll. Will the BJP do its best ever, ever? Will the NDA cross that Charsoka number, 400 par? These are questions that need to be answered. There is one big state to go. That is the state of Maharashtra, 48 seats. We'll get to that. We are counting back to it exactly at 9.15. We'll put out the Maharashtra and, of course, the All India numbers. But, ladies and gentlemen, this is the most comprehensive, exhaustive, widespread opinion poll in a long, long time. We have gone to 518 constituencies, the News 18 Poll Hub, doing computer-aided personal interviews across 518 Lok Sabha constituencies. Let's quickly bring you the methodology so that it's beyond doubt that there is nothing tele about it, there is nothing imaginary about it, it's all on ground. 21 major states have been covered, accounting for 95% of the Lok Sabha constituencies. The remaining 25 seats, we will make a projection, an extrapolation based on the trends and we'll give you the final numbers. 1,18,616 people have been polled with a questionnaire in 11 languages. So no language, every spoken language that they understand, they have given the interviews in the language they understand. Total of 518 Lok Sabha constituencies have been covered out of 543. And 210 interviews conducted in each constituency. Every constituency, we have had at least 210 people who have been interviewed. Three Vidhan Sabha constituencies in each Lok Sabha seat has been covered. The choice of the Vidhan Sabha seat or the Vidhan Sabha constituencies in each Lok Sabha seat has been done via random sampling. Five polling booths selected via random sampling there. 
and to ensure that there is equitable distribution, the right hand rule has also come into place. A lot of effort has gone into getting you the data which you can trust. Now let's try and understand where the story stands at this point. The story stands where the NDA is making huge gains compared to the last time around. What's the story? The NDA is leading in a total of 57 seats more than their 2019 performance. Where are gains from this gain? Himachal 0, Punjab 1, Haryana 0, Delhi 0, Uttarakhand 0. When I say 0 means it's the same score as last time. This is one better than last time. So that's what, that's how you got to interpret it. Uttar Pradesh 13 better than last time. Plus 13, 13 better than last time. And let's get some more of the states here. Assam is plus 3, 3 more than last time. West Bengal, 7 more than last time. Bihar, 1 less than the last time around for the NDA. Jharkhand is the same as last time. That's why 0, no gain, no loss. Chhattisgarh plus 1. Odisha, plus 5, big bump up here. Telangana, again, plus 4. Maharashtra, plus 3. Madhya Pradesh, MP, that is 0. Let's come down and look at these numbers here. Andhra Pradesh, plus 15. Karnataka, minus 1. Kerala, plus 2. And Tamil Nadu, plus 5. So, overall, 57. 57 seats the NDA has gained. Zaka Jacob, Dr. Anand Ranganathan, Smita Prakash, Swapan Das Gupta, Shahzad Punawala, National Spokesperson of the BJP with us, and Rahul Shivshankar. 73 seats still to go, sir. Maharashtra numbers, we have given them a little bit of an inkling on that map too. The smarter ones will catch that. We'll put out the numbers in 10 minutes. But we've got to be honest, even we are getting the numbers as we are seeing it. That's what's happening. It'll be interesting to see the overall NDA vote share. Just to put this into perspective, I did some, again, data analysis. Uh, the quality of the victory will be key because obviously this is turning out to be a bit of a non-contest. You just want to know how reaffirming this victory was for Mr. Modi. And this is very interesting statistics. The BJP won 224 seats. Mm -hmm. I think I began with this. With 50% plus vote share in 2019. That was 88 more. 88 more than 2014. Here, the BJP and the NDA has grown further. Made inroads into places where... Quite frankly, many people didn't think it would uh, make an impact. Now we need to see if it can stay with uh, those vote shares in the other seats that, you know, we'll have to look at the, the data. Uh, to put this in context, again, <clears throat> the last time someone, well, obviously this is a pro-incumbency hmm. vote. It's, a, it's an advantage. But there was an incumbency advantage uh, uh, in 1971 for Indira Gandhi. She was very hobbled. And she came back because of defections, etc. She was the leader of Congress R. She came back with a 43% vote share. Has the BJP equaled that? We don't know. We'll have to see. Of course, there's a material difference here. The Prime Minister has been in power for 10 years. There, Indira, Indira Gandhi, as I said, was stabbed in the back by a whole bunch of people who wanted her out. Uh, but that, that was, was before the Bangladesh uh, war. Yes. So, so, so you can you, you can imagine had the election yeah. taken place, you know, what, well, so, so you have that. I'm not looking at the 84 mandate because uh, obviously yes. that was in the back of a tragedy. No, I was going to say that, you know, yeah. the only time a coalition yeah. or a party has got more than 400 seats yeah. in Indian yes. elections yeah. in what, 15, 16 yeah. but that's general elections sort of, that we've had. Yes, of course, it yeah. was on the back of a, of, a, yes. of a very tragic event. And even in that election, there was a distinct before and after situation. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, Congress so, was actually losing yeah. till that thing happened. Yes. And then the next round of polls that happened after the assassination, then there was no, this No, no, you're talking about the Rajiv Gandhi assassination. 84. Rajiv Which you're one are you talking about? 84. 84. I'm talking 84. about 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. Ah, okay. 84. Sorry. Yeah. So the only time any party or coalition has crossed 400 is in 84. But like I said, it was on the back of a tragic event. The two times any party or coalition has gone past 350, once Nehru did and once in 1971, Mrs. Gandhi did. So if Mr. Modi goes past 350 and 360, presumably, then he would outdo the best ever performance of both Jawaharlal Nehru and Indira Gandhi. If you, I mean, you, if are you, you go look past at 272 hmm. in a complex country like ours, I think that's just good enough. I mean, you know, you could then say that, look, I need those numbers for tactical and strategic reasons. And I think one of those reasons is that the BJP wants presence in the Rajya Sabha where it can go ahead with the mm. legislative uh, agenda of uh, unfettered perhaps by 
the various uh, others that held it no, back for long periods of time. And there will be some significant pushes. Shehzad Punawala, let me quickly ask you. Uh, First of all, welcome. Thank you for joining us in this grand finale. We're going to come to the state that you belong to in just a bit. But in, if you look at the numbers as of now, what do you reckon is the reason why the numbers are showing that this has been done in February 2024, still three, four months ahead of the actual polls? So the single reason that I can see is that this is Modi ki guarantee at play. I mean, even when you've counted for 70 seats, which means you have about 73 seats left. Yeah, 73, uh, yeah. Of which I think we are going to get at least 65 seats. <laughs> so if you're 353 now, add 65 to that, it's poor, poor 415. I'm allowed to uh, speculate a little bit. And I think, I suspect uh, that I know what is happening in Maharashtra. We will be the dominant force there and also in the Northeast. Shehzad, uh, sorry to interrupt, Shehzad knows his numbers. He says 415. Because the highest anybody has ever got is 414. That was 1984. Yeah, 84. So, so uh, it takes one genius to identify another <laughs> one. Uh, but having said that, on a more serious note, look, uh, you know, even when you're talking about Nehruji and about Indiraji, the fact of the matter is that our democracy was essentially a single party democracy with a party that had an overhanging legacy of the freedom movement. Uh, although Mahatma Gandhi had a different view about shutting that shop mm -hmm. and allowing a level playing field. So in those contexts, that achieved is not as big as at the time now when you have a deepening of democratic institutions. Some might argue that democratic institutions are under stress. That's, that's something they do night after night despite the Supreme Court verdicts. So I think in today's context, one thing is for sure that pro-incumbency. Earlier, you would have heard Rahul, Anand and Zaka come up with anti-incumbency why governments change. But if after 10 years, a government is coming with a bigger mandate, Modi has given to this country's lexicon the terminology of pro-incumbency. And you see that in Gujarat, in Madhya Pradesh, in Uttar Pradesh, in Uttarakhand. You perform, you deliver and people vote for you on your performance. Right. See, two, three things, Swapandasji, please tell me. Is it about building the party or diffusing the opposition that the BJP is focused on, <coughs> largely? Because everywhere you see that they have tried to break down the opposition rather than build the party. The other thing is, change the party or change the leadership before the voter votes you out. That's also another template that's been followed. Well, I think you try and <clears throat> neutralize all the negatives to begin with, you know, any potential one. And that includes changing the uh, MPs where necessary. It also includes strengthening the party organization. But let me add the one thing. If the, the scale of this victory, if it really happens, is cannot be explained by party organization. Yeah. <coughs> it's something else. In 2014, it was the BJP consciously decided to make it a presidential type election. But Modi was known only in northern, western and central India. He was not known elsewhere. In 2019, there was a more greater national presence after five years. Now, what we are seeing is not merely a presence, but it's almost like cult-like status. You know, I think that's really what the change has been. And really the party organization exists. And that's the uneven in its quality. Hmm. In, in some places, like in Gujarat, Amit Shah goes to his constituency once. You know, there you have someone who's monitoring every page of the voter rules. Yeah. The, 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 the extent of the organization. And in places like West Bengal where people, uh, the party organization exists in terror. Yeah. You know, so there's a very vast degree of unevenness around it. But what's really there is that if they can harvest as much as possible, this enormous sort of this cult-like status which Modi has acquired and that is really what this and election that cult -like is And that cult-like status could not have happened unless there was delivery on ground. Of course, uh, of the, course. The Labharti factor. Smita Prakash and then Dr. Angana. Yeah, you know, uh, Rahul mentions 272 should be enough in a country like India. Now, obviously, Rahul, you're not a tiger mom, you know. 90 percent kafi nahi hai. You have to get 98 percent if you want to get admission, right? I differ here so, with CJ. I am I'm so, quite conscious of what gender I am. <laughs> <laughs> I would never be tiger mom. It's, it's fluid right so now. So nothing right? fluid there. That's one point. The second point is, you know, I think, uh, like Shopanda said, that, you know, this everybody working towards it. Uh, the BJP, I think, wants to set itself that, you know, it is go it is the default party of governance. Something that one used to associate the Congress party with, that this is the default pa party with, of governance with three terms and sweeping changes in every aspect of a citizen's life. 
uh, from the voting stage, from the election stage to the delivery of government mechanisms, of government policies and programs, they are trying to establish with a third term that the, uh, that the BJP has replaced the Congress party as the party of governance, as the natural party of governance in this country. Hmm. If I yes. could just add to that, uh, you know, uh, to take on from where uh, Swapanda and Swita, both of you, you've talked of a cult-like status. You've talked of, uh, you know, delivery. I think if one goes a little bit back and understands how come this en masse vote base has shifted, for clearly it has shifted to the BJP, 200, 300 million people, from the BSP, from the Congress, you talked about Bengal, you know, tribal vote, everything. Why has that happened? I think people forget that one of the most iconic speeches Narendra Modi has made, away from, you know, all the rhetoric and the uh, oratory, was in 2008, 2009. He said, I, for the next 15 years, in the next year, I'm going to make what he called as a nano class. So people understand what nano class was. So he said, it is above the lowest socioeconomic strata and lower than the lowest middle class. And if you look at in the last <coughs> 10 years, the delivery that has happened of 100 million gas connections, of 120 million toilets, of 110 million tap connections. Or food uh, security for 80 crore people. Or for th three years running, 460 million, uh, uh, you know, Mudra Yojana, 360 million Ayushman cards that 200, 300 million people have, are now voting for Narendra Modi. So the cult is backed with you one. know something that has been delivered. A quick one. Look so, at what he was facing in these last five years. So there was massive pushback, almost riots. Uh, then you had a demo hangover. You had GST. You had COVID. You had a war in Ukraine that was pressuring prices. Then you had a hostile Western press and an ecosystem that was sort of trying to pull you asunder. And so the Israel one from Anand, conflict, yeah. Anand uses this often, I'm going to borrow it from him. Uh, many, very often people say that Modi is winning because of Tina. There is no alternative. But this result shows that it's Nita. <laughs> Narendra is the only alternative. And it comes when you have these new votes that we are adding to. The Congress's vote is, I think Rahul had put out a very informative tweet on that, that it's, it's, it's been stagnant and it might even fall now. But the BJP is looking for new votes and therefore I was very enthusiastic. I was jumping when I was seeing the Tamil Nadu and Kerala results mm. that you all were showing. Yes. That no, excites I, I do, me more wanna, than UP. I wanna, okay, we've got 30 seconds to yeah, go yeah, to the Maharashtra number, point, sorry. <laughs> no, no, make a point, make a point, make a no, point. No, no, I, I do want, yes, there is a cult-like status, no doubt about it. But a cult-like status... I think there is, even now, even at th this result, you are seeing the extent to which there is a permeation of that cult-like status, whether it is in the south, whether it is in the east. Yes, it, these numbers hold. It's 25 to the BJP and 17 to the TMC in Bengal. But can the BJP dislodge Mamta in the 2026 Bengal elections? But are we know. using well, the word cult a little, that. little loosely? Yeah. Not just there that. are still, there are still okay. 50. Just, just right. hold your thoughts oh, regarding the Maharashtra numbers, the final numbers from the News 18 mega opinion poll, plus this will be the 25 seats that will be extrapolated. Look at that, 41 seats to the NDA. 41 seats to the NDA out of 48, 7 to the INDIA. 41 seats to the NDA. 7 to the INDIA. So the Maha Vikas Agadi over there, 7 seats only. 41 to the NDA. The last time around, last time around, what was the score? Is there a gain for the BJP and the NDA here? We we'll look at all of that in just a bit. 48% vote share. After the diffusion of the political parties there, a lot of people were asking, Inko vote kaha se milega? This Gatbandan, the BJP, the Shinde faction, Ajit Pawar, all of these together, they are saying that the projections are 48% vote share when Prime Minister Narendra Modi is on the ticket. INDIA, 34%. One trend, ladies and gentlemen, across all states. The Congress plus Alliance has an average of 30 to 35%, 33 to 35% vote share. It's a constant. Others, 18%. That keeps fluctuating up and down. The BJP, NDA vote shares go up and down. But on an average, the INDIA, even if it is coming second or losing the plot there, the INDIA somewhere is always getting this 35%. Will that reflect nationally also? And that's the story in itself. That's the story in itself. But Maharashtra, but Maharashtra... The region-wise breakup, before we come to Shahzad, I think the region-wise region breakup in Maharashtra is fascinating in and of itself. Because, you know, you look at this, and the thing that stands out for me is uh, the Mumbai Thane region. Look at this, nine seats for the NDA, only one 
to the India Alliance. Now, Mumbai and Thane were supposed to be the Shiv Sena's guard. This is where, you know, the Shiv Sena blooded its politics. And this is where everybody said, oh, Udav Thakre has sympathy going in his favour and so on and so forth. It's nine seats to the NDA, only one to the uh, India Alliance. Which means that Eknath Shinde has established himself that his Sena, the Shinde Sena, is the real Sena in Mumbai. The other thing that stands out is in the western part, which again is alarm bells as far as Sharad Pawar is concerned. Western Maharashtra has always been the NCP and Mr. Pawar's guard. But look at this, it's 10 seats to the NDA, only one seat to the India Alliance, which means that I don't know if this is a passing of the baton in that sense from Mr. Senior Pawar, Sharad Pawar to Ajit Pawar, whose faction seems to be getting 10 seats and only one seat to the, to the NCP. But really, these two regions for me stand out in a way that it could really have an impact, not just in the Lok Sabha election now, but six months down the line in the Vidhan Sabha election as well. Well, quickly, ladies and gentlemen, 518 seats is what we covered on the News 18 Mega Opinion Poll. NDA has 394, six short of 400. There are 25 seats which we have not yet extrapolated. The INDIA is three short of 100. 25 seats we have not yet extrapolated. Out of 518, the NDA is romping home. It's got a clear, clear mandate, an overwhelming mandate. But will the NDA do char so par when it comes to the extrapolation of 543 seats? Others are at 27 seats, ladies and gentlemen. Let's keep the focus on that. The moment we extrapolate based on these trends, the remaining 25 seats, we've got to wait and see. NDA char so par hota hai ki nahi? INDIA so par hota hai ki nahi? Who gets the gains here? And does the BJP come close to 350 seats? A never before for the BJP. They would have never even thought. Atal Bihari Vajpayee said, Ek din 300 laenge, but ye saale 300 ho sakte hai ki nahi? These are all questions, but let's come back to Maharashtra. One Maharashtra, we have good friend Clyde Crasto and uh, Kambu Chaudhary also with us. That. Clyde, before I come to you, yes, Just to inject, now, look, I mean, this is a brilliant result and congratulations, Shadad. But, you know, Maharashtra, uh, we, when we began this entire series two days ago, we began with a plate called Honesty. And on the Honesty sweepstakes, the Prime Minister got 75, 76. I think uh, mm. the others were very far behind. Is this... Uh, this great triumph in Maharashtra, without a blemish, would you say, would you be honest enough to say that, look, you know, we've taken in a lot of people who we actually thought were corrupt and tainted, etc. Rahul, you know, I'm a very big uh, consumer and a very big reader of Indian texts. And Krishnaji, in the war against the Kauravs, had utilized the support of all kinds of elements who were on the Kaurav side. But would you say that Krishnaji's victory or the victory of Dharma was blemished? So I think that that should suffice. This is a victory of Gita. Gita being growth, infrastructure, technology, and Atma Nirbhar Bharat. And I think that Gita, which is with him, victory is with him. Krishna ji has blessed us. We are only walking on no, his path. No, but thing is, point Viral is when, when it comes to Krishna, those who do their karma properly, Krishna rewards them irrespective of whether they are good or bad. Here, those who are already called out bad cannot suddenly overnight become good. Let's no, go but back. if they no, were no, all no, this so bad, why are they with them? Is okay. Clyde, pra yeah, yeah, Clyde, Clyde, Clyde Crasto. Good to have you with us, Kamru Chaudhary. <laughs> Namaste, Clyde. Uh, I'm sure you will not agree with these numbers, but there will be a certain amount of worry. Kya se kya ho gaya? Well, Anand, nice to see you. Looking good. I mean, actually, hello to the others also. The thing is, uh, I mean, you spoke about uh, karma, and I think I completely agree with you. Very rarely do my friend Anand and I agree on a lot of things when it's <laughs> on television. But I agree with you. Karma, you know, comes and bites you. I don't want to say the rest, you know. Point here is what you said was very clear that if people who are tainted, they are, you know, cannot be overnight clean. And that's what my point is. I'll tell you something very clearly. You said I will not agree with this numbers. Fair enough. And I mean, I'm not going to agree with this numbers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm finding it very, uh, very uh, surprising that Rahul Shiv Shankar has already said these are results and declared and, you know, exceptional or whatever. That's okay. Point here is very clear. My question is does the BJP believe that all these people, whom their leaders also, had accused of scam, taint, you know, Kirit Somat went to town, you know, accusing all these leaders. They all joined. I mean, just a few days before Ajit Pohar joined uh, the, uh, the ranks mm -hmm. of uh, the BJP, you know, our Honorable Prime Minister was talking about 70 crores, you know, okay. irrigation scam. Clyde, can I interrupt you yeah, there? Sir. 
the political aji baji is all right for the bjp who called them corrupt at all points in time you as the ncp always maintained that ajit pawar was not tainted does the no, voter so now why. believe that ajit pawar was not yes, tainted but he was in the wrong so team let, and we'll vote no, for him so because let, now he's let, in the right team so let the voters decide let me tell you something anand right these are not the uh, results okay you will say that i won't agree because i'm hmm. in the opposition fair enough but you know and i know we can't change this that these are not the results but let me tell you one thing mark my words and i'll be coming back on this uh, channel and i'll be uh, debating with you further also but mark my words hmm. ajit pawar and eknath shinde both the groups are going to be a liability for the bharatiya janata party in maharashtra hmm. i repeat ajit pawar group and eknath shinde group are going to be a liability for the bharatiya janata party in maharashtra they would have done much better right had so not let, let me quickly let me just quickly say namaste let me just quickly say namaste to prithviraj chavan ji former maharashtra chief minister is there with us prithviraj chavan ji namaste namaste this is, namaste this is anand here with me zaka and we also have rahul shivshankar shehzad punawala smita prakash swapan das gupta yeah. anand ragnathan all of us in the studio we've just put out the maharashtra number sir 41 okay. seats to the nda 7 seats to the indi alliance would you agree with this and uh, an overwhelming uh, vote share also uh, going towards the nda in maharashtra out of the 48 seats your thoughts sir no i think uh, 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 the numbers are completely skewed uh, not keeping with the reality on the ground uh one of the uh, comments about the vote share hmm. you have shown 18% vote share as uh, um, the undecided or the uh, independents or all now that's a very large number see in maharashtra these are early days the final alliance is not yet uh, frozen uh, we are discussing with mahavikas aghadi of vanch what mr prakash ambedkar there are smaller parties like swabhimani shetkari sangathan uh, which are with us on Uh, many other smaller parties are with us so this 18% to independence is uh, i think it's has skewed the calculation quite a lot but the ground reality is not what your numbers are showing hmm. see there is always a initial advantage of ruling party because they are continuously advertising mr modi is on television uh, no matter what so the so people who are casually uh, say uh, voting or expressing their opinion in the opinion poll and uh, remember uh, Mo- modi's uh, uh, television appearance and all that all that but this is not what's going to happen when people actually go to the polling booth and push a button to select a new government hmm. that's going to be completely different that's when the inflation that's when the uh, berozgari that's when the farmer suicide and all these things will come to the fore right and whether the present government has succeeded in fulfilling the promises that they made before 14 before 19 that is what people are going to remember prithvi raji prithvi raji and to all right our panelists now, sir even the sir, seat adjustment is not done ji sir j- uh, please hold your thoughts 30 seconds ladies and just 30 seconds because we've got the final numbers we've got the extrapolation and the final numbers of 543 seats it's the mega opinion poll news 18 mega opinion poll the number for the nda is 411 411 is the final number for the NDA 400 par so the remaining 25 seats from 394 to 411 so bulk of those 25 seats are going to the NDA and that's why the NDA is 400 par ladies and gentlemen 411 and if that's the number the big number the INDIA also crosses the 100 mark the INDIA alliance is at 105 seats 411 to the nda of which somewhere the understanding is about 60 odd seats is to the allies and that means 350 seats ladies and gentlemen is for the bjp 350 is for the bjp and somewhere around the allies would account for about 60 61 seats that's where the 411 number comes now prithviraj chavan ji this is the news 18 mega opinion poll you believe maharashtra numbers are skewed they're wrong How much do you think the INDIA alliance or the Mahavikas Aghadi is in position to win out of 48 seats? Let's take the conversation forward. Ji. No, no. I think we'll. Def- I have said in other channel also, the ground reality. If you look at uh, the real situation in Maharashtra, the INDIA alliance, the Mahavikas Aghadi alliance is definitely going to get a majority of the seats out of 48. There is absolutely no doubt. 
And as the issues get crystallized, as the campaign kicks off, hmm. as the candidates go in the field, I think this picture will be frozen further. Jee. Right now, there's only Mr. Modi. And there's nobody against him hmm. because then the candidates are not finalized, the alliance is not yet finalized. So, initial advantage will go to the ruling party, hmm. which is massively advertise, advertising. Mr. Modi is on the television completely all the time. Right. So, that's fine. I mean, uh, people who just give their opinion quickly, uh, remember Mr. Modi's photograph and all that. So, Initial advantage to Sir, the I have to party just say, is acceptable, but not to that extent that you're showing. Each each individual person has been personally but interviewed. Numbers are just not 210 believable. respondents in every Lok Sabha seat. It's a computer aided personal interview. The average interview duration is 12 to 15 uh, minutes. So there are at least 25 to 30 questions that they have answered, and that's when we've got these numbers. Sir, please stay on with us. Just there are a lot of people who want to uh, in the studio who have their points of view. Yes, Shahzad Punawala, quickly. Smita Prakash, then Dr. Anand Rangarathan. Uh -huh. Overall, nationally, the BJP and the NDA is getting about 48% vote share. That's what we're we given to understand. We'll go to Zakar Zika for the details on the just wall. Just points here. Just Shaza. 10 seconds. Okay. With all due respect, first of all, I have tremendous respect for Prithvira Chavanji. He knows I personally regard him a lot. But, you know, the ground is slipping under the feet of the Congress. When is the last time the Congress party in a state like Maharashtra, which has been like the West Bengal of the Congress for a very long period of time, has been able to form government on its own. The BJP over the last two elections has been the only party to get above 100 seats, point number one. Point number two, sir, you are saying Modi Modi ji everywhere, Revan Reddy has a different point of view, it's not TV that wins you or loses you elections. But having said that, what is happening in your own alliance? What is happening in the northwest seat of Mumbai? Sanjay Raut and Sanjay Nirupam, Sanjay Raut is saying Congress is zero party. And Sanjay Nirupam says that, you know, there's a tutti putti sena. So, sir, you are not even able to get your alliance act together. Leave alone articulating the issues and just the issues on which people There's are voting. Still time. Okay, let, let, let me, he just wants to respond. Yes, Prithviraj. Yeah. No, I think these are early days. The alliance is not yet frozen here. Candidates are not finalized. Now, the individual candidates who do not get the seat may have made some comments. And these are not the views of the parties. Parties are sitting together every day and trying to iron out the last problems in the alliance. There are some issues. One or two places where uh, both parties are arguing for a uh, seat uh, to be given to them. But it's when the campaign takes off, when the candidates are in the field, the issues get frozen. And when the real issues of people, like the Berozgari, Mahengai, the farmer suicide, the, the corruption uh, with which the governments have been formed, I think when that um, is unfurled before the people, I think the real story will come out. You know, these are early days, I, of course. Jitri Raji uh, saying no, that, you know, you it's Modi, numbers, Modi, uh, Modi everywhere. Yeah. It's interesting that the Congress has not said so far, or anybody has not said so far, that Rahul Gandhi has entered Maharashtra today. He was on stage with Sharad Pawar, who yeah. is an alliance partner, and the vibes were True. very cold. There was nothing happening. He spoke about EVM Hatao. He says people are saying EVM Hatao. The other thing he spoke about was Agni Veer. Again, non-resonance. His yatra ends on 17th. It's ending right now in Maharashtra on the 17th. But no mention of that in the Congress. If you look at social media, nobody's talking about that yatra having entered Maharashtra. The other thing which I want to say is about the uh, no. earlier election and today. One minute, Prithi Raji, just a couple of seconds. Uh, this, between hmm. last time and this time, Shiv Sena has split, the NCP has split. Today, the uh, Supreme Court has pulled up the Ajit Pawar faction to say that don't use Sharad Pawar's picture. You have your own uh, party, your own image. Why are you using Sharad Pawar? So, you know, while we might say the Sharad Pawar faction is completely finished and even Rahul Gandhi might not give importance mm. to Sharad Pawar like they used to earlier on the stage, the fact is you cannot write off Sharad Pawar, which all of us reporters time and again, every election have been proven I'm wrong. No, on I, Sharad I just Pawar want to add one, one small thing, you know, uh, like I said, these numbers are Umesh Jha's numbers, right? These, these are not my numbers or Rahul Shiv Shankar's numbers. But my point is, this is the first election up until 2019 in Maharashtra, you had natural allies. You had the BJP and the Shiv Sena, which were natural allies. On the other side, you had the Congress and the NCP, which were natural allies. This is the first statewide election that you're seeing in Maharashtra where you have unnatural allies on both sides. You have BJP, Shinde Sena, Ajit Pawar faction of NCP on one side. You have on the other side, Shiv Sena, UBT and Congress. I mean, Lord knows that if the Shiv Sena and the Congress were to come together 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, 
They are completely unnatural allies. So to say that the people of Maharashtra are just going to completely overlook the unnatural alliances, they always, this is a famous adage, right? In, in politics, chemistry matters much more than arithmetic. This is an anti-chemistry mandate. Yes, Dr. Yeah, Rangalathan. Yes, I mean, I have tremendous respect for Prithvi Raj. He is one of the few top leaders of Maharashtra who hasn't yet joined the BJP. But you know, a <laughs> couple, of, couple of things out here that i like to point out. Number one, when he says that Modi is on television all the time and that, please remember, Modi being on television is not winning BJP votes. Rahul being on television all the time is winning BJP votes. And you know, when he says, when the issues come not on... Not you, vote, Rahul. When you Rahul, Gandhi. Rahul Gandhi. Rahul Gandhi. And when, when he talks about, you know, inflation, unemployment, he must remember inflation is at its lowest on the eve of any general election in the last memory. Unemployment is at its lowest, 3.1%. So I, even I, along with uh, Shahzad, my brother, take the word, it's not Tina, it's not Nita, it's Smita. Splendid Modi is the alternative. <laughs> Splendid Modi is the alternative. Splendid Modi is the right. alternative. Okay, so Pandas Gupta ji. But just one line on this unnatural alliances, bit, sir, if I may. <laughs> unnatural alliances, just for your knowledge, even when the N uh, NCP was a whole uh, with Sharad Pawarji and Ajit yeah. Pawarji, they actually saved our government in 2014 in the state. When Shiv Sena was outside the alliance, it was Sharad Pawarji who took the decision to support us in the assembly. So these are not unnatural things. Ekna Chinde being with BJP is not at all unnatural. Yes, Uddhav ji being with Congress is very unnatural because they used to accuse Uddhav Sena of committing the Mumbai riots. See, you okay, uh, Prithviraj, uh, yes, uh, Swapandaji, and then after that, Prithviraj Chawan. Yeah. Uh, uh, incidentally, it's not Swapandaji, it's Swapan. Hmm. Uh, <coughs> That's my it's habit, a, sir. I address everybody with G and respect. Yeah. No, That's no, no, no. Das is not yeah. a. It's not one word. It's his way of saying how old Swapanji. you are. Swapanji. <laughs> Swapanji. <laughs> That's right. Okay, Swapanji is better. Okay, okay thank you. you know, Swapanji I, I and feel, Swapan I'm, Das. I'm rather Swapanji. sort of. I, I feel very bad for for Prithvi Rajawan. You know, because it here is a person who is the leader of one of the most important organizations in Maharashtra. Now, I'm basically so saying, look, give us some time. Let's get our act together. Mm. And I think it's, it's a very sad situation. And he knows very well that it's unlikely to happen and then unlikely to get their act mm. together ever. And it's so reminiscent because, I mean, if, uh, pe people like me who've got a long historical memory, remember 1984 yeah. when we were in the mm. opposition, mm. opposition activists and we were saying the same thing. Oh, give us time. We'll somehow cobble together a coalition government. Mm. We'll get something. But the Congress had the momentum completely on its side. And it's so reminiscent of that, that, you know, I, I, I mean, my heart goes out to Prithviraj. Prithviraj Chavanji. You know how to rub salt. Thank you. So listen, two things. As I said, these are early days. The alliances are not in place. The candidate is not in place. The issues are not yet been crystallized. When the election continues after some time, you'll know that people will ultimately forget about natural alliance and unnatural alliance. People will go to the real issues. And the, you cannot ignore the real issues. So I think uh, let's not worry about what's happening today. There's a massive advertisement campaign. Now people talked about Rahul Gandhi entered Maharashtra. Yes, he's entered Maharashtra. But his rallies are not being shown by any television channel. He's been completely blanked out. But you look at the response that he's getting in, uh, the, in various districts that he had entered there. No, no, think, but Smita Prakash's uh, you know, objection was that the Congress Party itself is not pushing it. The Congress Party itself is not talking about it in no, its no. handle. That's what Smita Prakash had to say. Who has put the no, media no, in What the should room? Congress Party do? Pr Congress Prithvi Party, Raji, with due respect, you see, and you know, the, the live... The live media is not showing. Uh, the sir, the sir, regular sir, channels sir, sir, are not showing the Rahul Gandhi line, rally at all. Sir, who has made the G14 list of we journalists? We have to depend on the social media. Sir, who has put the G14 list of journalists where you have banned certain journalists that we will not appear on your shows? We will not appear on your discussions. Mm -hmm. By the way, Anand is in that G14 list, aren't you, Anand? Oh, no, I am in the list of some BJP, BJP national spokespersons also, so what this runs in every political party. What no, I just hope the states I think it does not where there are, they, where they there are allies any. of the Congress no. who are in power. No, like, for example, in Tamil Nadu. List of journalists, I don't... Sir, what prevents in Tamil Nadu or Kerala uh, or in Andhra Pradesh for them to use the footage which is available to the channels? They can run that, but even in those states, they are not running. The point is, I'm uh, sorry to say this, but wo no. ra rally or yatra no, but, 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 but what you're saying is to black out the 
कांग्रेस no no show of strength or no no aspects highlighting the fact that the ncp supremo sharad pawar and rahul gandhi are on the same stage so that's what smita prakash was saying quickly to our uh, viewers news 18 mega opinion well, no, poll this point. is the break up to to prithviraj chavan ji clyde crasto kamru chaudhary who's not yet spoken we'll come to him now 350 to the bjp the allies get 61 seats the congress short of 50 seats the congress is at 49 and the allies of the congress allies in the india alliance the smaller parties perhaps some of the regional chakrabs gain more they collectively have 56 seats compared to the national party that is congress party at 49 the indi alliance overall 105 the nda 411 prithviraj chavan ji i know you have to leave he's 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 not there he's left already yes kamru chaudhary your thoughts and then i'll bring in clyde castro again yeah yeah Uh, we all heard my leader prithviraj ji he, he gave a very very good description of the entire opinion poll that you are running on national television but since i have joined late and i have seen the maharashtra opinion poll let me just point out a few facts out here 2019 bjp is polled around 27% shivsena around 23 ncp around 15 and congress around 16% now what does this suggest that the bjp is going to up to around or the or the or the alliance of the bjp is going up to 41% and congress and the alliance is going up to 33% what necessarily you have done is you have split the shiv sena and the ncp votes and added that with the bjp votes but the ground reality is absolutely different as my leader prithviraj ji has just now showed because shinde is a, is go, going to be a discard after this election ajit pawar will also be a discard after this election lies chotala was in haryana so what happens here is that my reports from the ground suggest that the shiv sena votes will be split around on a 70 30 basis the ncp votes led by ajit pawar group will be split on a 70 30 votes the mahavikas agadi out here stands a chance to reach up to 40 so his argument is that class. ajit pa if ajit pawar will get 30% because of the split so ekna shinde 30% if the maths was no, no, so deterministic please. why one second then in 2019 there was a state called uttar pradesh which saw since the word is being used an unnatural alliance the sp the bsp and the rld all coming together but there was no chemistry as a result of which they ended up at somewhere around 20% or 22% of the vote rahul so rahul. maths is not deterministic sir it is no, 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 chemistry no, no, no. let me and let me just be be logical in your questioning sir let me just explain what happened in uttar pradesh visa bill so maths is all about logic coming coming to the point sir the basic what happened in uttar pradesh was a reverse polarization same way what happened in west bengal in 2021 assembly election so don't bank on the entire thing that the entire country is after modi ji and bhartiya janata party there is a very accept it or not there no, is a there is no denying it the there is a 35% vote that has gone to the opposition no, no. 48% yeah, 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 has gone to the nda there is a 35% vote that's gone to the opposition and it still remains but I'm the not, fact is sir that 35% has remained a constant it's not gone up clyde crasto quickly and then we'll get you an update on mamta banerji also yes clyde crasto Anand, hear me out. Anand, I mean, I I've been watching your numbers. I'm seeing them. Fair enough. Yeah. You've done your uh, homework and you're doing all the exercise and everything's fair enough. But the fact of the matter is, the ground reality is very different. And you know, I am connected to the ground. Hmm. Let me tell you one thing. The ground shows something different. I'm not taking anything away from the numbers that you're giving for the BJP. But here we are discussing Ajit Pawar. We are discussing Ekna Chinde. Believe me, the ground reality about these two groups are completely different. My friend Shahzad Huma always have a healthy banter with. You know, he gave an example of uh, uh, Sanjay Nirupam and uh, Sanjay Raut. Anyway, if you start talking about this, there are so many people in the BJP who are upset. 
There are people who are leaving the BJP, going to the Congress. We had Mr. Nilesh Lanke, who's now left the Ajit Pawar group and is coming back uh, to our group. So these things are going to happen. I just feel, see, Shahzad and I can keep going. He can no, give examples. I can give examples. In the we aftermath. Can but the point here is very simple. Mr. I think Krasno, it's a little too early to get to numbers. I don't want to, yes. you know, let's not constantly only sort of obsess about one state now that we have the whole picture. picture. Just one quick point, though. Uh, it's funny that we are constantly now nitpicking mm. when it's quite clear that this particular election is happening and I'm not saying that, you know, all results mirror, but there is a trend. The Congress threw the kitchen sink at the Hindi belt where you had three significant states just in December and in the lead up to that in November. Before that, you had Mr. Rahul Gandhi embarking on a Bharat Joro Yatra and uh, what were the trends there? The BJP won three. Even in Telangana, it's done better. And in Mizoram, it opened its account by two, where even Christian candidates won. What does it tell you? It's carrying simply more people. More people are willing to trust it. Can I That's the ground line? reality. Can mm. I just add one line to this? I completely agree with what Rahul is saying. And what these people are missing is, forget the numbers. They are missing that the template of politics has changed. They are trapped in the 1980s and 90s politics. OBC, caste reservation, North, South. The, these the, are not the issues. The, the, the issues of today, just 10 seconds, yeah. Anand. The issues of today is that where is this country going as far as foreign policy is concerned? Where is it going as far as Garibi Hatao is concerned? Where is it going as far as taking the economies forward is concerned? And there is only one person talking about that, one party that's talking about and giving a vision. You can criticize us on our vision. You can say, why is it number five right now? Why is it number four? But instead of doing that, what they're saying is, I am talking about GST, mein kitna, OBC, kitna See, I'll tell you what, this is, no, no, there is a, there is a point of... It's not about OBC because that's why Khattar, Khattar was replaced. Uh, no, Anand, uh, I'll tell you about that. As far as Saini is concerned, the party is very clear that this party is going to also give space to a lot of its karikartas. They, today, we, I am proud of the fact that there are a lot of 45 to 55 year olds who are now becoming the second generation leaders. Whether it's Hemanta Sarma, whether it's Yogi Adityanath Ji, whether it's Home Minister Amit Shah Ji, who is in that same age bracket, whether it's Devendra Fadnavis Ji, who is the deputy CM, whether it's a younger lot, we in our party no, has a constant they, system where they are younger they, people are also coming up. Despite they, big nobody is on they also replaced for, Shivraj uh, Chauhan. They also said that they look beyond Vasundra Raji. So there you have to say that there is a certain understanding and learning that unless you promote the Karakartas and the next generation, five years, ten years down the line, you're not. There is a party with a plan. That is that's one aspect. But with respect to Maharashtra, BMC elections have been pushed. The the state assembly elections are going to come in October. Somewhere one gets the feeling that by having two DCMs, one CM, they are showing that this UT can work. Because they are the three people. If these three can work together, then perhaps the UT will work together on ground and some success in the Lok Sabha will translate into gains in the assembly elections. So this is a retrofit happening. If Lok Sabha will be good, then we will have to go to Lok Sabha. So all is not well for the BJP also. Please understand that. And you have had big reversals also, sir. You have had big reversals in Karnataka. You have not got it right. Five years of Kerala and these two seats that you are projecting, that is also a surprise. Five years in Kerala, first place the Prime Minister went to after winning 2019 was Guruvayur. And you still don't have the confidence to win two seats in Kerala. Uh, so, and those are 20 big yeah, states. Those are 20 big states. Tamil Nadu, Anna Malaya and the legwork that he's doing, still not sure if you'll win five. Still uh, look, not sure if you'll win five. Anand, so, Anand, I'm just saying, now, sir, there now are let me clear speak 10 seconds to counter where, you need, where, where you need to do a lot of legwork. We acknowledge that. Anand, who in their right mind would have said that two times you'll form government in Tripura? Who in their right mind would have said that we would have, 10 years ago, formed government in Haryana twice? Who in their right mind would have said that we would have formed government twice in Assam? Who in their right mind would have said from 2 to 18 we'll go in uh, Bengal and today we are going to be the number one party? Who hmm. in their right mind would have said we'll be the largest party in Odisha? Hmm. Five ten years ago, so hmm. okay. You can taunt us that in Kerala there are two seats difficult, in Tamil Nadu there are three seats difficult. But we are a party that never leaves one inch of this country. We take every place seriously. We take corporation elections seriously. We take Lok Sabha elections seriously. From we no, give no, it our best the, shot. The, From 2014, no, 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 there is there is there is one part. There is one part. I I agree with Shadad. They take every election seriously, but. This election, you are using the crutches of the BJD, you are using the crutches of the Telugu Desam Party, you are using the crutches of, I don't know, ADMK, Remnants and OP so on. Rajbar in UP. For, in yeah, UP. yeah. For, for a party that says, you know, we are the numero uno, we want Congress mukt. 
you are basically using other people and other parties. I mean, look at the number of folks you've taken from, you know, th that you say are corrupt. I'm not even getting into Ajit Pawar and so on, right? May I respond? Yeah. Uh, the Congress party on a daily basis says this election is Modi versus Mudda. They are tying up with DMK whom they call murderer of Rajiv Gandhi. They are tying up with uh, Mamta Banerjee whom they want Rashtrapati Shasan against. They are tying up with Aam Aadmi Party who no, was calling them corrupt and was saying that in Punjab no, no, 80 Congress. No, no, please now don't, listen, get no, don't get into what about me. Don't get into what about me. Sir, you had 303 seats in the Lok Sabha. Anand Ji, I am giving you context. After the context, you have to answer. No, 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 no. First, you have to answer. You have to answer. You have to answer. Now, the answer. The answer is simply this. In Punjab for the longest time, we had an alliance with the Akalis. The answer is in Punjab for the longest time, we had an alliance with the Akalis. Yeah. That alliance did not get us any position in the big position in government. The reason we had it was not for political objectives alone, but for solidarity objectives where Hindu Sikh unity could be maintained. Lot of our uh, things are to keep this country united, and we do no, alliances sir, sir, not just in based Bengal, on political objectives. What has happened is Arjun Singh. You wanted to break him. He brought him to the. the he won the election. Then he quit and he went and joined the Trinamool Congress. You bring in imports the moment the weather wind changes, they will go out. Where was the party sangatan there for ten years? You were working in Bengal to improve the party sangatan. No party sangatan. Happened there, so there are many, many examples that can be given. One, why one is the aspect, Trinamool Congress breaking people? Viewers, from, uh, aspect, Congress party and taking them. They may have taken. Can, can we have? Can we have the final breakup, ladies and gentlemen? Once again, right behind me, one important point where we need to know: from 303, the BJP taking support from everybody else has come to 350 seats. The BJP, on its own, as per the News 18 Mega Opinion poll is gaining 47 seats compared to 2019. And in terms of the number of allies and the strength of the allies in the NDA, Rahul Shivshankar, bear me out, they are actually a weaker grouping of the NDA this time around compared to 2019 when they had certain stronger groups, ladies and gentlemen. That's the big question. Overall, <laughs> will this hold? Zaka Jacob, we've got to wind up. Well, 370 have not been able to win, but 400 have been able to Final word, I have to wind up. The number, the other challenge that is before the BJP is to see that there is no lethargy in their cadre workers to bring the committed voters to the voting booth because many people will say, Are long weekend, let's go away. Especially in places like Bangalore and Delhi and places like that where they say, Chalo, anyway, our party, which is like if they, they are committed voters of the BJP, our party is going to win anyway. Look at the opinion polls, look at the polls, yeah. ah, we can take it easy. It now depends on whether the BJP is able to work with the same kind of enthusiasm to get those voters to the polling booth. Because well, ladies and gentlemen, the last I have vote to is not up. counted. I have, not I have to, we have to wind up. Yeah. Thank you very, very much to all our guests, them, to all them. those who polled, who took part in the News 18 Mega Opinion poll, to Umesh Shah and his team at the News 18 Poll Hub, Zaka Jacob, Rahul Shivshankar, the entire team at the back end. Ladies and gentlemen, this is perhaps the biggest, most comprehensive opinion poll that's been conducted in the recent times. How the numbers stick eventually, you, Janta Janardhan, 97 crore voters have to decide. But for us, thank you very much. It's been a fantastic two days. Thank you very much for joining us. And that's the number. As we zoom out of the studios, that's Narendra Modi and Team BJP in the NDA zooming to Charso Park. It's 370 and for the NDA 400 plus. Mm. That's why this concerted effort over five years to break down the Shiv Sena, to break down, win back the JDU and to of course focus hard on the other side and try to break down the alliance game. Intriguingly, very interesting, this jump in vote share for the BJP mm. and I'm, I'm leaving it back to you, in right. those 224 seats did not yield many more then uh, obviously 2014. So while from 88, they went to a huge number uh, of, uh, you know, uh, 224. And that means, as you can see, 88 more than 2014. It didn't get them many more seats. The vote share increased in seats where it's already quite strong.
Correct. It needs to jump up in seats where it is not strong. See, to make that conversion one true. three. Overall, overall, two, what three. we are what we are looking at is, and I think somewhere the prime minister has shifted the dynamic. He has said 370 and 400 par. Technically, in our minds, ladies and gentlemen, we need to remember it's 272 par. You you par. If the NDA crosses 272, they are back in government. And if they go 300, then they are comfortable. Now 303 is the last time around. 325, 330 plus overall for the NDA. That's why the prime minister has shifted the goalpost. But basis on this opinion poll, Shivani Gupta is there on the wall with us. But but the point is, had they not done what they've done to the Shiv Sena, not won back the JDU, it could have been a very tight, very tight contest. See, even now it very is about retention. Yeah. It, you have to also gain. You have to yes. make more. So 300, 3 to 3, 370. So it needs to break to out get those 67 more seats. Four seats. Yeah. To 60. get more than you know 30, 40 percent of 242 the vote share. 242 का तो report card निकल गया. 300 exactly. 